Wonderful. I think I could be more in frame. I think I could be more in frame. Let me see this. Get your ass over here. There we go. Let me try that. There we go. I like that. I like that. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. If it's a Monday morning, you already know the forecast. It's going to be a shit storm. Uh, I'm your host, Aries Bookman, and today is episode 52. I told you I was going to do 52. I told you I was going to do 52. So today is episode 52. You can watch my show once a week for a year. I have a show every week. Who else does that? Nobody. Nobody. Who else does that? Nobody. Good to see y'all in the chat. Welcome to the show. Cast the Spell Course Sing. First in the building. Good to see y'all. Thank you for your appearance. Appreciate it. Uh, Cast Spell says super excited. Hell yeah, man. I'm kind of, I'm excited. It's a low boiling chill. You know, you know, I'm enjoying myself here. I'm happy, proud, wonderful. Glad y'all showed the fuck up, man. Gerald Sarnbright, Buenos Diaz. Buenos Diaz, man. Buenos Diaz, Aaron Inky. Good morning, good morning. Boy, got his umbrella. Good job. Welcome to the show. Season finale, Lucid Bay. You are exactly right, man. Hey, man. It has to end every now and then. I need things that, that can die. Okay, I need things that can die. Otherwise, you get a Fast and Furious 27. Okay, let things die. What was the anime? Uh, it had two really good swordsmen. One had red, he was all uh, loose, and the other one had blue on, he had glasses, and he was really. Uh, was it Samurai X? I don't think it was Samurai. I don't know, now it's going to bother me. But that shit was supposed to die. And then they left a little chip at the end. No, it's just going to die. It's going to die. <laughs> Fuck you, me. Malik, uh, good to see you in the chat, man. Um, who was it? Misha X, good morning, everyone. Good to see you in the chat. Side of Ejects, the shitty Monday in traffic and coffee. Hey, man, I got Samurai Shampoo. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Malik. I knew I... There we go. Fuck. Yeah, ah, oh. I love that anime. Anime was great. Last episode bothered the fuck out of me because they left that fucking loose end. How dare you? They were supposed to die. Like, you know, Naruto do this shit all the time. I remember the one specifically, the one I remember specifically was Choji. Red, yellow, and uh, and uh, green, little ball, little, little food pill you're supposed to eat, and then die, and then don't. Look, I love Choji, but I was mad. Don't lie to me. If I'd have known he could just be cool, there'd have been no buildup, bro. Don't lie to me like that. Fucking vegan food. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guys, today is the last episode, season 50 fucking, oh no, season 2, episode 50 fucking 2. Um... <sighs> Today I want to talk about, um, I titled it Spiritual Warfare, um, I want to get loose a little bit today, I want to get loose, stretch my legs, you know, kick back, um, and talk about a few things I wouldn't normally talk about, um, mostly because I'm worried about leaving you behind, but I feel like fucking dancing today, so keep up kiddo, uh, but they killed Neji, right? Right, Neji gotta die, but fucking Choji sitting here with eating this fat ass fucking food pill, but Neji gotta die. So many other motherfuckers could have died in this. Also, if you didn't notice, I have this hat on because today it has to be last episode. I'm not as beautiful as I could be. So you won't notice because now I look fun. Fuck you. We're gonna do the intro. We're gonna do the intro, and then we're gonna get into this today.
dig it. Oh, <clears throat> before I get to talking the good shit today, the good shit, uh, I want to give you a taste of something. Just a taste. Look, when I say it's going to be a taste, you know it's going to be a taste. I ain't going to give you the whole fucking meal. Not on my time. <clears throat> Not on my time, sir. Uh, here, load up real quick. Load up real quick. Uh, I want to show you, I want to give you a glimpse of what the fuck I'm talking about. And I told you niggas, I'm going to the playground. I'm not joking. You may listen, you'd be like, Aries, you sound like you're being mean about it. No, I'm not. You're just a little soft and it's okay because it, you're going to get tougher. We're going to go to the playground. <clears throat> you're going to scrape your knee. I got a, I got a, I got a, uh, I got a fanny pack, band-aids, neosporin, and some, some, it's, it's baby powder, but I tell you it's magic fairy powder because when I sprinkle it on your boo-boo, you don't cry. <sighs> And I need to have that. It's special, it's good, it's wonderful. Things like that are okay. You know, think back to your child. I wish my mama would have did it, did it, did Yeah, she ain't had a thing. You're all right, though. Where is my screen? You've got to be fucking kidding me. Um, where's my screen? Oh, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. You know what I'm going to do? Because I'm all powerful and I can do what the fuck I want to do. And plus, this is the last episode anyways. Well, I give a fuck about that. Here we go. Boom. Boom. All right, here. I can, and I can make this small. This is what I got going on for you, okay? All right. I just want to tell you I'm about to do some shit. I'm about to do some shit. Otherwise, I'd shut the fuck up. I prefer to be quiet and invisible. So that by the time you're dead, you didn't know it was coming. No, I don't get to brag about it afterwards, but that's where most villains die. Anyways, here guys, check this out real quick before we get into this. It's beautiful, right? It's beautiful. I don't know why I pause myself. There's no sound on it, so I'm fucking stupid. But anyways, uh, yes, the guilt coming soon. Um, I want to get y'all to get started. That's that's my big thing. That's my big thing. I want y'all to get started. What? I hurt my wife. Oh no. Anyways. Is it? Oh, right. That's what it was. Thank you, love. Um, why is this up? My chat. My chat. Where are you going? What's going on? Okay. Joe Summer by Playground. I like amusement parks. We're going to the amusement park. We're going to ride the roller coaster. We're going to stand in line. And I'm going to let you ask me the same question six times until we get up there. It's cool. No, it's cool. We're going to do it, bro. What's on the books today? On the books today, I'm talking about spiritual warfare, man. I'm about to let my uh, let my legs stretch out a little bit. I'm gonna talk about this law stuff in a, in a in a way I haven't really talked about it um, intentionally because I like to make the distinctions between things. And if you just put everything together, people think they're all the same thing. Um, but what the hell, right? I feel good today. I feel good. <laughs> Side EJ, did you say fentanyl band aid? Uh. No, I didn't say fentanyl band-aid. Sounds kind of funny, though. No, I didn't say fentanyl. You will get a band-aid with neosporin and magic fairy dust. And your boo-boo will not hurt, and it will heal. And you will say, wow, you are amazing. And I'll say, right back at you. That's the relationship we're going to have. You're going to love it. You'll be creeped out at first. You're like, why is he doing this? No, no, it's all right. Watch. Because everybody thinks I'm going to fucking trick them. It's not that I'm going to. It's that I could. You should have been on your P's and Q's the whole damn time anyway. Fuck you doing? Looking at me like I'm crazy. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> said I'm the asshole child. But you don't have to be. You don't have to be. Well, even if you are, it's what you're supposed to be. All right, guys. This is what I want to do today. Uh, smooth should die. Good to see you in the chat. This is what I want to do today. <sighs> All right. Spiritual warfare. <sighs> I 
I told you before, um, in different circumstances, that the thing that you've done to yourself legally is the same thing you've done to yourself spiritually. Um, and I want to lean into that because in order to comprehend what I mean when I say spiritual warfare, you have to understand that point. And I think what I want to do is dance circles around that point until we have to step on it. Uh, traffic and tacos. Oh, God damn, what kind of car ride is that, my nigga? Go ahead, Jakari. Good to see you in the building, man. Dawson, Dawson, good to see you stopping by. Stop acting like it's hard work. Right, it's hard work. Oh. This is why it's hard work, though. This is why it's hard work, because there are a thousand people, at least, who say words that for people who don't know, when they listen, they hear those words and my words, and because they don't know, they say, hey, this must be the similar thing, and it's not. Hey, I, I, I know what he's talking about, because I know those two words. You don't. <sighs> so I have, to, I have to dance around the same bush ten different times, but that's, that's Ring Around the Rosie. So we're going to play Ring Around the Fucking Rosie. We're going to play Ring Around the Fucking Rosie because it's necessary to learn. You know, I wish somebody would have played Ring Around the Rosie with me when I was coming up. Nope. Nope. Go cut the grass. What you mean go cut the grass? Go cut the We don't have a lawn. Go cut the grass. Scissors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No one to teach. No one to teach me. It's cool. So we're going to play Ring Around the Fucking Rosie. Anyways, spiritual warfare. Now, when you think spiritual warfare, I, I don't want you to think Harry Potter, Star Wars, Anunnaki aliens. Um, I don't want you to think, uh, what was it, the, the, the Great Brotherhood, um, the, the chocolate-colored Jesus aliens dressed in white, right? That's not, this is, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about some intergalactic narrative and dimensional dimensional cosmic drama where where there's this evil archon and his his lineage of minions and they're coming and they're, they're fighting like demons and you just don't know because the ancestors are fighting the war and the war and it's i'm not i'm that's not what i'm referring to okay it's it's nothing like that um we come into the thing where, especially with the new Gnostic, well, the re revived Gnostic cult, okay, where the perspective is that the physical world is some type of a prison. It's not. It's not. And, and you have to understand this to get what I mean by spiritual warfare. Remember, kiddo. I'm all these gods. I'm everything. I am the universe. I am that I am. Okay, that sounds very supreme. Very powerful. You know, very all-encompassing. That can't be in prison. Or, now, no, no, hold on, hold on a second. This is because this is the fun part. <sighs> it's all supreme. Can't be in prison. But how can it? I know what the rules say. You can't imprison that. It's too supreme. I get it. But now, how can you? See this? You want to think like a trickster, okay? You want to worry, you want to make sure you don't get tricked, right? You want to be on your P's and Q's when you see the trickster. This is how the trickster thinks. Yes, I know what the rules are. But now, how can they, how can that happen? Even if I still follow the rules. This is how you can imprison that supreme thing. You can get it to agree to do so. You have an unlimited capacity to contract, to make agreements. In the physical sense, you have a, you have a, a, a unlimited capacity to contract. And in the spiritual sense, if you will, okay? You have an unlimited capacity to be. You have an unlimited capacity to be. And by virtue of that, an unlimited capacity, a limited capacity to create, excuse me, okay? That's spiritual, physical. As ter in terms of being one of the people, a people, the people, all right, in terms of being one of the people, flesh and blood, um, 
you have an unlimited capacity to contract. Uh, we, the people even use that unlimited capacity to contract to create the Constitution of the United States of America. Well, Constitution for the United States of America, excuse me. Um, and that's mentioned in the preamble. Anyways, the thing you are, the thing anything is really, all right, cannot be imprisoned. It cannot be imprisoned, but how can it? if it agrees to, and that's your predicament. That's the, that's the crux of why this spiritual warfare is so... First off, the word is ingenious, uh, but it's so um, seemingly sadistic, okay? Because uh, most people have the presumption that things are supposed to be good, things are supposed to be nice, things are supposed to ultimately be the hero wins and everything is it's really all order and love. Okay, wonderful. Um, I won't tell you that's not the case, but what I will tell you is it's only true to a certain degree. Um, it's not like zero and one. This is the best example I can give for this. It's like zero and one. Zero is infinitely nothing. One is infinitely something. They're both infinities, but different kinds of infinities. Where one exists, the other is invalid and vice versa. Okay, so to the degree to which love rules all, it also doesn't because there's other shit that rules. Okay, pain, power. Um, but these are philosophical conversations. I'm gonna, let me stick back to the law. Um, because most folks don't fuck with philosophy of law. What you've done to yourself spiritually is the same thing you're doing to yourself legally, which is part of the reason it works so well. Um, <clears throat> you've diminished your own capacity of your own volition. You've diminished your own capacity of your own volition. Okay? Here, let's do a little bit of a history. Uh, let's, let's do a little jump in history, guys. Hold on, where am I at? Uh... Excellent, lovely. You're outstanding. Um, dark cover melanated Archon Willie Lynch. High fructose corn syrup warfare. <laughs> Love it. Right. That's why I have to go all the way around the bush so niggas don't think I'm telling them the Anunnaki. Fucking dumb shit. Don't call it dumb. Don't call it dumb. It's a child. Okay. It's a poor reasoning. It's poor reasoning. It's misinterpretations. Um, some agreements tend to be the most tricky. Hell yeah, they're the good ones. What? Female alert test. Oh, what did niggas think the cell phone was gonna do? <sighs> cell phone Anunnaki. You know, like, like, and see, look, bro, this is the thing. <sighs> it's one of those tactics. It's beautiful. Because I'm telling you, this entire system is beautiful. Y'all motherfuckers, the Matrix, you gotta It's beautiful. It's ingenious. Oh, it's delicious. The only problem I have with it is the fuck that I gotta be in it with you niggas. Can I have better company, please? No? No? Okay, smooth. All right. No, I mean, I guess I, it, it's very on brand. I can't choose my company. Very on brand, guys. I love it. The system is ingenious, guys. It's ingenious. Okay, so check, check it out. Because of the female alerts and the Anunnaki, and it, there, there's constantly a thing for you to look forward to. And see, this is what you niggas do when you look forward to something. Oh, as soon as such and such happens, then I'm a da 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 da. As soon as such and such and such and such happens, then I'm a da 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 da. You niggas waiting for the fall. You niggas waiting for the return. You waiting for the upgrade. You always wait. Always waiting. In the same breath, you'll tell me there's no future and past and time is an illusion, but you always waiting. Always waiting for the perfect time to get to, to do this, to do that. Nigga, the perfect time was 10 months ago. But because you keep getting distracted by the next thing to wait on, you don't start. You don't start the, you don't start the work because you're waiting on the next thing that you think is supposed to be the big thing. The big thing has been you since jump. The big thing has been you since jump. Your unlimited capacity to contract. And so I say, new nigga, you could be anything. You could be anything, but you decide. Human, human experience and U.S. citizen. Let's take the history trip, right? 
Let's take the history trip. Next line, uh, Lincoln. Put that nigga on the penny and turn him the other way. Ha! Anyways, niggas love Lincoln, right? The Emancipation Proclamation. What is an emancipation? What's an emancipation? An emancipation is a transfer of property. A transfer of property. U.S. citizens, 13th, 14th Amendment, 14th Amendment creating the U.S. citizens, 13th Amendment uh, making uh, involuntary servitude, uh, outlawing involuntary servitude, 14th Amendment creating U.S. citizens. The U.S. citizen is a public slave. Slaves went from being private slaves, privately owned slaves, to publicly owned slaves. Privately owned slaves to publicly, and emancipation is a transfer of property. Okay? A U.S. citizen is a slave. <sighs> it's been the case since, since, since its inception. Even the discussions around the creation of such a thing when the, when the, when the 13th and 14th Amendment were being uh, drafted, I guess you could say, the discussions around them. Uh, it's like, look, if, if you create this thing, your forefathers will be peasants or servants or slaves in the land of their, you know, your, 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 um, your progeny, your, um, what's the word I want? Your heirs. There we go. Your heirs will be slaves from the lands of their fathers. Okay. This is what you have. U.S. citizens are publicly owned slaves. Okay. State slaves. You can say, okay, Ari, so it must be as simple as saying, hey, I'm not a U.S. citizen. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Before 1913, you could have done that. Before 1913, you could have done that. Once again, history, guys, history. Because if you don't know what got you to the point you're at, there's no way you can project yourself into the future, at least not effectively. Um, 1913 to 1933. Because it take... God, I'm skipping pieces. This is fucking big. But so what? I'm trying to tell you two sides of it at the same time. Ooh. Okay. Here. This is what I'll do first. I'll tell you the trick. Society music says, ouch. I'm sorry, bro. I don't know what I did. We got band-aids. We got fucking band-aids. Neosporin with, with sparkles in it. It don't make it more effective, but it feels better to have it on there. We got Neosporin, bro. It's all right. We got it. Somebody help us say that EJ. How is emancipation a transfer of property? Is that a definition? That's a definition of emancipation. That's what, that's what, that, that's what I mean, Gerald. Yes, sir. Um... <sighs> first time I heard somebody say that, I was like, okay, I got to look that up. And it took me, it took me a few dictionaries. In fact, I had to get into some old ones um, to find that the word emancipation was, was, was associated with the transfer of property. Because they could have just said, we freeing the niggas. We's freeing the niggas. Let's stop. Ain't saying nothing about freedom. Ain't saying nothing about freedom. Fuck you mean. Yeah, yeah, I want those sparkles. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm giving them out. I'm giving them out. All right. Here's the trick, okay? <sighs> Fuck. Everybody thinks they know history. Nobody researches history. You just kind of say the next thing. Anyways, the trick, okay? Let's take it back to the courtroom. Because <sighs> what you are is never contested. It's never, un no one, no one's contesting what you are. The point of what, what you are isn't the point. It's what you're agreeing to. That's the point. Let's say, let's say this for instance, right? Um, let's say, nigga gonna hate this, right? <laughs> let's say you walk into jail, right? You just got arrested. You walk in into jail, you know, and you walk in, you like, hey everybody, Nobody's gonna rape my butt. Okay, cool. Heard your statement. But as you say that, right, 
Because you don't know no. We don't know. You think what you're doing is what you're supposed to do when you walk into jail, right? So you walk in, you pull some Vaseline out your pocket. I don't know, I don't know where you got it. Don't ask me that for the analogy. Just listen, okay? You pull the Vaseline out your pocket. As you're telling him, I ain't getting fucked in the butt. Put plenty of Vaseline laying over the table and swooping up. That's what you motherfuckers do when you walk into court. Because what you do is what you saw on television. It's what, it, it's what a child would do. I understand that. But they don't think they're children. Parents patria. Thank you. Parents patria. Because if somebody's an idiot, you don't tell them they're an idiot. Because then who, if, you, if you're arguing with an idiot, then who's the bigger idiot? Okay, if you're sitting there and a dog does something that dogs do, and you're laughing and say, oh, look at that stupid dog. Who's stupid? Okay, silent judicial notice. God, there's, see, there's so many different little rules, but motherfuckers think they know because they heard something that they can tell. Here's the trick, excuse me. Here's the trick. You're being summoned, all right? You're being summoned. Time, space, place, and plane. This works in law and it works in spirituality, okay? Time, space, place, and plane. You think because you do what you see on TV, that it's the same. You're agreeing to it. You're the, the only things you know about what it means to do to describe yourself are slave terms. Where do you live? You give me a number and a name. What's your name? You give me three names, a first, middle, and last name. You don't know anything about a given name or a family name. This is part of it, 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 but, it, but, it, but it leans right into the fact that you're all bastards. We're all bastards. And you say, what difference is it that, that, that you're a bastard? Are you just insulting me, Arius? No, I'm not insulting you because I could do much better if I was. You don't have any lineage. There's no familiar lineage. There's no... There's no... Um, heritable blood you're a beast you're a creature but and it's not because someone has said it it's because it's how you're presenting it's what you're agreeing to be it's the biggest thing man you walk into a room full of people you've never met in your life you have no idea what they were doing before you walked into that room the arrogance the ignorance but that's what it is, you know, you sit in front of the regularly scheduled programming. And I tell y'all all the time, human is the lie. There it is. That's my crux. Thank you. See, I had to walk around my own fucking bush to find where I was going to go back to. Human is a lie. Because that's, this, is, this is why I call this, in its totality, spiritual warfare. Because it's that little piece that's fucking you up the hardest. Not in somebody's courtroom, not on paperwork, not in some spiritual realm, right where you're sitting right now. Human is the lie. That's what you're being fed. Think back, let's see, this is mystery. Think back, well, before the colonizer decided, hey, the world is mine. Long before the arrival of the colonizer. Long before the notion of human. You know, motherfuckers would pep the chest up and say, we was kings. We was gods. When did that stop? See, it's one thing to say it. Talk is cheap. It's one thing to say it. But in order to, tr to actually see yourself as a god, you have to see the world differently. Right now, motherfuckers see a tree and then see cells and atoms and niggas ain't see that hundreds of thousands of years ago when I was God. <clears throat> I ain't see that. Saw all the gods. You don't see other gods because your god is some fantasy thing from fucking Hollywood. Human is the lie. It's not, I'm not telling you super meat bag. Once again, that's Hollywood. But why would you think super meat bag? Because when I say what is you, you think the meat bag and the personality. No, I don't, Arius. I'm a god. You're lying. 
Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. You walk into courtrooms. And see, this is, this is why I mentioned courtrooms. Because this is the only time motherfuckers are even in contact with the state at all. You tell me, I'm a law abiding, I'm a U.S. citizen, I got you, vote or die. Shut the fuck up. You don't know what none of that shit means, but you heard another, heard another nigga say it. Once again, regularly scheduled programming. And, and it makes sense, so I shouldn't even be this frustrated. The court is going to be the, 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 almost the only time any of y'all engage with the state at all. Why? It's a slave plantation. Most of the, the field, nigga, what the fuck the fuck master gonna talk to your field hand ass for? Huh? Workers' rights? How the hell do you identify as a worker? Because they're slaves. And it's training. It's conditioning. Voluntary servitude is what was outlawed. Fine. But that leaves involuntary servitude. And you can sign up for it every day. I say, what is you all the time? And it's not just the spiritual. It's the, it's the physical. The legal shit you're doing. What is you? What is you? Okay, you can, you can come in here and you can tell me. Once again, talk is cheap. Because look, when I ask, just like when I ask that shit about spiritual stuff. When I ask it about the law stuff, it's not to find a correct answer with your fucking school trauma. The question is to point in the direction of the framework that you're utilizing. Okay? What is you? I'm a U.S. citizen. Where'd you get that from? Okay, no, 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 let's not do that. Because I already said U.S. citizen, so you're going to jump to the thing and say, Oh, look, Aries, I'm ahead of the game and I'm impressive. Okay, let's, what you going to do? Um... I'm a Moor. Uh oh. There you go. Hey, you gonna say that, ain't you? I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm a Moor. Thought it was the right answer. Huh? Okay, let's get the framework. Cause this is the thing. Like I said before, 1913, you could have probably made that argument between 1913 and 1933, when, when, when quote unquote the New Deal or the premises for the New Deal was put on the books. It sat for 20 years without any content contention, mostly because they uh, it, it, was, it was put on the books by, uh, I think it was congressmen, senators. Uh, I think it was during a fucking Christmas holiday, and it was a big, thick thing. Nobody was going to read it anyways, but it sat there for 20 years. By 1933, it was fully agreed to, all right? Uh, your silence is acquiescence. Um, <clears throat> by 1933, yeah, by 1933, it's, it's a whole new ball game, okay? You're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. You're not in Kansas anymore. I think The Wizard of Oz is an amazing analogy for this. I think The Wizard of Oz is an amazing analogy of this, okay? Because throughout this, and maybe I should have started with this analogy. Throughout this, think about yourself as Dorothy, okay? This applies spiritually and physically, okay? Think about yourself as Dorothy. You start in Kansas. You start in Kansas, okay? Law. You start as the people. The people are what has the unlimited capacity. They're what creates the Constitution and all these things you call the government, okay? Spiritually. You start primordial. The beginning is the end. You start where you end. Now, to say the beginning is the end, it does not mean there's no race. In fact, I would say it's the opposite. It, 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 um, it invokes the whole race itself. So you have to roll the race in order for the beginning to actually be the end. You can't just sit there at the starting line and say, well, I'm at the end. No, that's dumb. You may as well have not even got on the track. Anyways, excuse me. You start in Kansas. And like I tell you, you never left Kansas. You never left Kansas. But, okay. Rigmarole, right? Rigmarole. You got your, you're running in fear from, from something that's, that's quite natural, um, and now you're confused. Now you're confused, all right? And you're in a whole other world than you've ever been in, all right? So from Kansas to Oz is 
primordial to physical life, okay? From Kansas to Oz is the people to being U.S. citizens. U.S. citizens are creations of Congress. Congress is a creation of the Constitution. The Constitution is a creation of the people. So the people start at the top and decide, you know what, I'm gonna agree to be this. It's just like I tell you with the janitor analogy, where you're the, you're the king of the castle and your highest servant is there. Okay, what we doing, boss? That's the judge up there, your highest servant. Okay, okay, Mr. Uh, 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 Mr. Brandon, Master Brandon, what are we doing? Mr. Brandon, Master Brandon, what are we doing? Your highest servant in the fucking house. Look at you and decide, okay, what are we doing? And what do you say? I want to be the lowest possible janitor. Remember, start in Kansas. Start starting primordial. What do you want to do? I want to be the lowest possible janitor. That's your highest servant. Not going to disagree with you. You walk into the courtroom. Your highest servant is sitting there. And you decide to get on your knees Bow, and I'm not saying literally, you do it figuratively, all right? You do it, and this is, how, this is the, the path along the yellow brick road, okay? This is about law, and, and the physical world as well. This is why I ask you niggas what is you, and I, I so vehemently. Uh, it's because you have, to prese you have to defeat the presumption that's already there. You have to defeat the presumption. Like I said, you walk into a room full of people you've never met, and you don't know what's going on in that room. Dorothy ends up in a world of people she's never met and she doesn't know what's going on in that world. It would be ridiculous to presume that world is like Kansas. Ain't that what she do the whole time? Well, it's just not like Kansas. Take her forever. We're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Mind you, she never left Kansas. Even when the high, even when the king of the castle decides. I'm going to play the role of the lowest janitor. It's always the king. Always the king. Along the yellow brick road, Dorothy meets the straw man, the tin man, and the cowardly lion. Okay? When I say you have to defeat the presumption, one way I like to think about it is like a, one of those three-legged stools, right? All of Oz is sitting on this three-legged stool. All of the U.S. corporation is sitting on this stool, okay? And the only thing supporting it are three presumptions, at the very least, because with those three, you can build as many others as you want, just like geometry. With a triangle, I can build any other geometric shape, right? Remember, we've talked about this, and once again, these. It's the same, it's one, never mind, stop, don't do that. The presumptions. <clears throat> the straw man, the tin man, and the cowardly lion, okay? Because it's not about what's true, what's real, what's right. What can you prove? What can you prove? And you can't prove shit with a pocket full of references telling me to go look at this person, go look at that person, go look at that person. YouTube will do that for me. You don't need to do that. Nigga, you ain't Legba. You're fucking Brandon. My apologies. Three presumptions, okay? Three presumptions. This is the same thing. I, I give you three questions. I give you three questions. When I'm talking about what is you, there are three questions you are trying to answer when you're trying to replace your traditional cultures and religions. You can't just jump out and say, okay, I'm not Christian anymore, this is what I do. Oh, I'm not US citizen anymore, this is what I do. Talk is cheap! Let's talk about the legs on the, tight, on the stool. You, it, because when you defeat the presumption, it, the world of Oz has no standing. That's all the standing it had where that was that presumption that it's resting on. That's all the standing it has is the presumption it is resting on. You kick the legs from one of this fucking stool, it has nothing to stand on. But really, and I love this, I love this, and I say this, guys, I say this. Even if you, even if you defeat the presumption, oh, God is ingenious, I love it. 
If you don't know how you win, you didn't win. If you don't know how you win, you didn't win. Okay, so you have to knowingly, you have to intentionally disrupt these presumptions. You're not going to stumble along and somebody comes to save you and help you, little child. No, you got to do it yourself. That's what it means to be mature of age. All right. Because what is a slave? A slave is an ignorant motherfucker. The Africans were enslaved. Today you are slaves. The Africans were enslaved. Today you are slaves. It's a choice. It's your ignorance. You're born into it. You agree to it. You perpetuate it. The three presumptions, excuse me. And why these three presumptions matter is because they are evidence. Like I said, it don't matter what's true. It's what can you prove? It's what can you prove? And the evidence is proof against you. Motherfuckers in authenticating the birth certificate. 500 years ago, did I need a birth certificate? No. Well, it's just to record the births in your community. You don't think nobody ever did that? Well, this is the most efficient compared to what? Efficient towards what ends? This goes back to the human thing, bro. <sighs> Efficient to what ends? To human collectives, to human societies? Remember, remember kids, we was gods. We was kings. We was connected to nature. Well, what, at what point do you disconnect? Please, show me the place where Dorothy left Kansas. But everything you know is in relation to the world of ours. Where are you now? I'm in the state of Georgia. You got to identify yourself. Who are you? Social security number, driver's license, birth certificate. The certificate is certifying a registration. It's not even the original document. But then again, why would you ever think that if no one else in your slave community thinks it? Okay, so look, people, people talking about authenticating the birth certificate, that's that's... That's coming out of rule, uh, Minnesota Rule 220. Minnesota Rule 220. And when I say Minnesota Rule 220, don't think, oh, wow, he's saying 220. He must have, he must have, he must have, all of them. Oh, my God, no. It's very, it, it's very popular among people who talk about these things. And see, most people don't listen to the folks who talk about this stuff. They hear the thing they wanted so they can try and get out of something. If you don't know how you're agreeing to it, of the nature of the thing itself, you're not going to get out of it because you don't even know how you're in it. As a thing is bound, so it is unbound. The three presumptions, excuse me. The first one, the straw man. Okay. When people will say I'm not that name, okay, uh, well, people say that name is a corporate, a corporate entity, an ends legis, um, a, uh, a fictitious entity, okay? None of these things are incorrect. None of these things are incorrect. All right. Um, there's different ways. There's different ways to apply it, but in that style, I guess you could say. Um, you get you get uh, your driver's license. You get your bills in the mail. You get the. Um, it's not even all the birth certificates all the time. You get your social security card. That name is in all capital numbers on a tombstone. The name is in all capital letters. Why? You're talking about something dead. And you motherfuckers be talking about spirituality or cultism. It's the symbology, you dumbasses. Fuck, don't. Symbology is the study. The application is going to be the ism, okay? So the symbolism is the actual use of it. And most people just say symbology because that's the only word they have to describe the idea they're talking about, which is part of the reason you're fucked up in all this shit. What street do you live on? Do you predict that your taxable income for the year will be more or less than ten or, or more than ten thousand dollars? They sound like reasonable questions. 
They <laughs> sound like reasonable questions based on your programming. What is a street? It's not a road. A street is a place for business. What is a resident? Sir, where is your residence? Resident. 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 See, that's root words. I'm not trying to give you some spooky etymology. That's root words. It's right there in the word. Resident. A resident is someone who comes to some place that's foreign to them to do business. So if you're a resident of the United States of America, then you're not, you're, not, you're not supposed to be there. That's what a U.S. citizen is. It's a resident of the, of the United States of America. It's an, um, an illegal alien. No, not really. It's a legal alien. It's a legal alien. Um, a street is a place to do business. It's distinct from a road. But this is what I'm saying. You sit in front of the TV. You watch your movies. All right. You miss the double bluff. Look what they did to the black man. Don't you see it? You see those chakra colors in the back? This is really the... You missed it. You missed it. Take it from a trickster. You missed it. Oh, you missed it. Human is the lie. It's the background of the whole story. The unspoken premises of the whole story. You walk into the courtroom. Julie Simmons. I'm Julie Simmons. Let's begin. Let's begin. I have a uh, I have a information here from Officer Officer Two Goody Dum Dum Chimp Chip. He said you did three three things and you're charged with this. How do you plead? You're already 10 steps into a game. You should have stopped a minute ago. You're already 10 steps into a game. You should have stopped 10 minutes ago. And what you think you're going to, what you think you're supposed to do, right? Just like on Judge Judy, Judge Joe Brown, you're going to argue your case. Ain't you? You're going to argue your case. I, gotta, well, I can't wait to get in there because when I tell the judge, he going to know. Because <laughs> uh, I can just imagine kids on the playground talking about what they about to say to their parents and mom and dad when they get home so they can have a sleepover head ass. Why that shit so funny? No. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. This is the first piece of evidence against you, okay? The straw man. Like I said, the certificate is is evidencing an original piece of uh, original original document a registration okay so the certificate is something they give you you give them the registration they give you the certificate and remember, remember the people the constitution congress united states u.s citizens right Who, whoever cre you create the shit it's yours if you create the shit it's yours if you create the shit, it's yours. So they have the thing you created, and you take the thing they created. And not just that one. That's just the first one. That's just the straw man. All right? This is just the beginning of this three-step process to have a sound presumption. Okay? So here's the first piece of evidence against you. And you motherfuckers want to authenticate it. Why do you need it to begin with? I'm not saying destroy it because it's a, it, it's like a stock certificate. All right, there's a trust. But see, once again, niggas don't know that. I'm not telling you what to do when I say this. You have to understand the predicament that you're in before you decide what to do. Because look, look, Dorothy, you never left Kansas. Fuck you, man. What do I do? You never left Kansas. Why do you think the doing is the thing you got to get? Like, why is that the next step? <clears throat> Just like the spiritual stuff with the law stuff. It's the being that you're missing. 
It's the being that you're missing because the being immediately informs the doing. What are you? A tree. So what are you going to do? Absorb light. What are you? A dog. So what are you going to do? Sniff ass and dig. I think beta males do that too. <laughs> Piece of shit. Stop it. All right. Anyway. I would not suggest authentic, authenticating the birth certificate as though this is the thing that once you do it, now they know that you're not the piece of paper. It's obvious you're not the piece of paper, but the thing is, you don't know the game. The evidence, excuse me. That's the straw man, okay? This is the first piece of evidence against you that where you are is under them. Well, you got the thing I gave you. I even asked you to identify yourself, and you gave me the thing I gave you. Strike one. The Tin Man. Tax identification number. They even call it a TIN in Europe, I think. Um, the Tin Man. Tax identification number. God names his children Lucifer numbers them, okay? Um... For most of it, for, for us here in the States, it's going to be your social security number. This is the connective tissue, okay? One starts it, two is going to be the things that's connecting it. This is what creates the nexus. This is what creates the contact, okay? This is, this is, this is, um, no, 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 because no, it was the certificate that started the jurisdiction or, jurisdiction, or acknowledged its existence. This, this continues the substantiation of your agreement to the thing. Um, once again, they give you their thing, and you use it to identify yourself. They give you the thing they created, and you use it to identify yourself. Well, what choice do I have? What else would I use? Is what a slave would ask. That's what a slave would ask. Why? Because they have no idea of what the world is outside of the little world they live in. Remember the whole Harriet Tubman quote, right? Who knows if she even said it or even a real motherfucking person. Who knows? The quote, the idea is what is transmitted. Anyways, the quote, I would have saved, uh, I, I freed hundreds of slaves and I freed hundreds more if half of them would have known they were slaves. I was just a nigga, boss. What you mean that's a big world? Oh no, sir, I was going to get these bells of hate. Yes, sir, boss. It's a culture of it. Anyways, tax identification number. Here's the thing I made. Use it. Don't, it even says it ain't identification. But people still use it. It's a... Um, I think it's a federal crime to, to require somebody to present a social security number. But once again, hey, if you don't bring up the point, if you don't bring up the argument, you can't argue it. Like if you don't want to argue a point, uh, I think it's the uh, Abraham Lincoln quote. If you don't want to argue a point, don't bring it up. If you don't want to argue a point, don't bring it up. That's why I hate you niggas who talk about you don't want to debate. You just fucking pontificate. I'm just bringing information. I'm just bringing knowledge. Nobody can really know. Fuck out of here. Sophistry shit. Don't call yourself metaphysicians. Metaphys metaphysics is philosophy. These niggas are sophists. Well, that's what your attorneys are as well, though. God damn it. There's so many different rabbit holes to go down, and I don't want to, I don't want to just go down because I want to make sure I'm, I'm moving down this road, this yellow brick road, so we see what's going on. I'm not even looking at the chat. My bad. My bad. Uh, six eleven six. I'd argue that it's still voluntary servitude, regardless of whether or not the person knows the extent of the endeavor at hand. Of course, um, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Yes, you're you're absolutely right. It is. Fuck all my belongings, and I'll go happily dance naked in the forest. Donnie the boy of darkness. You know what? And that's the thing. Like that's the thing about this shit. You're more than welcome to do it. But like I said, talk is cheap, Donnie. It is. It is. Giving up Kroger. Giving up your bank card, your Amazon, your air condition, electricity that you don't have to worry about how it works. 
all these benefits and privileges. And you know, it's funny the things they construe as a privilege. <laughs> it's funny the things they construe as a privilege. Mm -hmm. See, look, equity is not going to save a volunteer. But if you're benefiting from something, you can't be you can't be an injured party there. You're benefiting, okay? Um, it's all the benefits and privileges people take, like a driver's license is a benefit and privilege. Um, uh, being held in, in one of their penitentiaries is a benefit and privilege. Why is it a benefit? Because there's no money and you now have a debt. No, you didn't, you didn't disagree with any of the context surrounding it. And really it doesn't matter because it depends on what kind of court you're in. Article one court or article three court. The Tin Man, excuse me. The Tin Man. No, I need to do Article 1 and Article 3 courts. Okay, I need to do one Article 1 and Article 3 because we're talking about jurisdiction. We're talking about jurisdiction. Okay, these jurisdictions are nested within each other. Remember, I showed you the cube and the sphere nested together. I need to pull it up. I need to pull it up. I need to pull it up because we're going to get to the cowardly line. My nigga, we're going to get to the fucking cowardly line. Oh, where do I have this? And I'd be, I'd be going into this folder like I remember where it was. I always do this to myself. Uh, ah, see, my time is getting better, boy. I'm getting better at this. Zoom into that shit real quick, bro. Remember, I show you the nested Cuban sphere, okay? I show you the nested Cuban sphere. And do not forget the empty space that is characterized by the X, Y, and Z axis, okay? Three densities. The, so the, the, the more denser densities are within the larger density, okay? So the Cuban sphere are within the empty space, all right? You nest that Cuban sphere together. The center of all of this is in all three densities, okay? So when you're, when you're talking about jurisdiction, because that's, that, that's, that's a good way to talk about this, okay? Um, the highest jurisdiction is going to be the empty space. The next highest jurisdiction will probably be the sphere, and then below that is the, um, the cube, okay? Um, it's like you have the planet, highest jurisdiction. Then you have a jurisdiction below that, uh, the United States of America. Then you have a jurisdiction below that, Georgia as a state, Okay? The jurisdictions being nested into each other. Once again, like I said, time, space, place, and plane. Time, space, place, and plane. What are you agreeing to? What have you not mentioned? Because the big thing about the fucking cowardly lion isn't what he does, it's what he's failed to do. It is the, your acts and your omissions, the things you have failed to do. That's the big thing. That's gonna fuck you up with jurisdiction. You don't realize what you're agreeing to. You don't. You don't. You don't. But ignorance is no excuse of the law. Donnie, good to see you here. You know what? This episode is dedicated to Donnie. Glad you're in the chat, man. Glad you're watching the show, Donnie. No shade at all. Donnie, this is gonna be great. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So we got two, we got two idiots that's my uh, Dorothy meets, right? We got your straw man. That's going to substantiate, because that certificate is based on the registration. But if you don't mention the registration, all you have, only have, you have that you can prove. All the evidence you have is that. Okay, this is why some people will, will go back and ask for a long form birth certificate or the birth registry. Um, not to say that's what you need to do, how you need to do it. Eh, not telling you that, just talk, just giving you the idea so you understand the concept or the principle as if, right? Anyways, <clears throat> straw man is the first one, okay? The second one is the 10 man, the tax identification number, social security. This is going to give you the, this is going to create the nexus or it's the mechanism by which a nexus would be created. Okay, um, it's gonna connect you to your driver's license, it's gonna connect you to your job and your, and your wages. All right, your wages. <laughs> uh, what makes it wages? What makes it wages? If I, uh, if I cut your grass and you gave me 
uh, some food you was grilling that day? Was that wages? What am I agreeing to when I say wages? What am I agreeing to when I say income? Here's the question. Will your, will your taxable income this year be greater than $10,000? Well, well, uh, I guess. Okay, then you have to, regardless of whether or not you say yes or no, You've, you've jumped over the point of whether or not you're a taxpayer, okay? Here's a better example of this. Here's a, and I love this analogy. I love this analogy, okay? Um, <laughs> Congress Slayer. <laughs> Donnie the Congress Slayer. Anyways, here's my analogy. Here's my analogy. Um, okay, and I'm, I'm sure I've used this before. Anyways, I always say that. Anyways, <clears throat> um, some peasants, right? Some peasants on the king's land, they got their torches and their, their, their spears and their pitchforks, and they're going to the king's castle because they found a dead girl in the king's woods. You know, got a naked, you know, titty out, just, uh, dead. Dead as fuck. And this is an outrage. This is an outrage. That was good vagina. We're going to the door right now and get an answer for this. So they knock on the king's door, right? Knock on the gate of the door. King doesn't come out, obviously. But the king's steward comes out, right? The king's steward. And the villagers are like, fuck this. Get the king out here right now. We found a dead woman in his woods, and we need somebody to answer for it right now. Okay, all right, all right, cool. Steward's like, all right, guys, you go. Whoo, hey, hey, calm down. This is... Who sounds like a serious thing. I'll make sure I inform the king immediately. And he turns, you know, to go back in and say, oh, wait, hold on a second. Now, now before I go inform the king, one question. <clears throat> when you found the dead girl, were you poaching or were you trespassing? All the peasants go home. Because what's the point? What are we talking about? What argument are you making? What are you bringing up? Fuck out of here. Fuck you even doing in my fucking woods. Get back to your radishes. Fuck you mean. No, in Europe it was terps. I think radishes are actually supposed to be delicious. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, anyways, the point. The point is what's the point of what you're talking about? You know, you watch the because I, I watch the people in court and they just love to be able to talk, love to be able to say their point. You ever get a parking ticket, a uh, traffic ticket, court date, right? You get 30 days. You get 30 days. Why do you get 30 days? So that you have enough time to, to, to do an administrative process. Why would you do an administrative process? Because it's, a legis it's more like it's a legislative court. It's all administration. A legislative court, excuse me. Let me, let me say what that means. Um, just like I told you. The people, the Constitution, Congress, U.S. citizens. Okay, when I'm talking about a legislative, it's, it's very legislative, executive, and judicial. Okay, uh, the three bodies of government, the three parts of government. Um, in terms of of the government we have here. Okay, um, the checks and balances. Uh, each one kind of checks each other so that none of them get out of control. <laughs> uh, president is part of the executive branch. Uh, Congress is going to be on the legislative, and the Supreme Court is judicial. Uh, now, this is where Article One and Article Three courts come in. Article One courts are legislative; they're part of Congress. They're they're only formally called a court. Like um, like if you worked at McDonald's and McDonald's called you in because you violated one of their bylaws, and it was an office meeting to talk about your violation, it's a court. That's what an Article court, Article One court is. Okay, it's for the U.S. citizens. It's an in-house court. Article Three courts are judicial. Okay, but if you don't know the difference, are you going to ask? No. Your acts and your omissions. Let's get to the cowardly line, because this is the last leg that the presumption has to stand on. <sighs> your fear. Ugh. I know. There are things to be fear fearful of. It's natural. 
but your fear will confuse you. Your fear will confuse you. Your omissions, the things you have not taken care of, the things you have not rebutted. You have all this evidence against what you're saying. You're saying, hey, I'm not a U.S. citizen. Okay, talk is cheap. Can you prove that? Because if I were to say you are a U.S. citizen, I have a pile of proof here. What do you have? Cheap talk. But why do you have no proof? Why do you have no evidence? Because you haven't put none down. You haven't created it. I have the authority to create evidence? You fucking peasant slave! Where would they get it from? You gave it to them. <laughs> you vested it in with power, but not in the capacity of a U.S. citizen. In the capacity of the people. A people, one of the people. That's the capacity that you need to be. Like I said, U.S. citizen, human. It's a diminished capacity. It's a diminished capacity. That's the problem. That's the issue. It's the context around what you're saying you is. The cowardly line is your agreement, your silent acquiescence. Okay, your silent acquiescence. You get the 30 days so that you can stipulate the facts. Before then, there's no facts in the room. There's no facts. What's going to make it a fact? Niggas love to say facts, right? There's no facts. What's going to make it a fact? Agreement of the parties. This is the whole reason you got to go in here with a controversy, because after 30 days, the parties still haven't made any type of agreement. So now we do need a judge. You got 30 days to, to make an agreement. 10 days for each piece of the administrative process. You send, a, you send your first letter. Hey guys, um, here's what I believe to the best of my abilities. Here's what I think is going on. Here's what I am. Um, if you got any problems with that, let me know because otherwise we're gonna have to go to court. Cool, you send it off, right? Three days to get there, three, day, three days to create it, three days to get there, and three days for them to reply. One day as a, um, just to round it off, right? That's 10 days. In your 30 days, you can do that three times. First time, you say, hey, guys, look, this is what I think. Second time, say, hey, look, Cody got lost in the mail. Might have forgot. Here's a second notice, just in case. Third notice, hey, guys, look, this is the third notice. Since I've received no reply, I'm going to assume that your silence is your acquiescence. And now we have stipulated facts. Now there are actually facts in the case. <sighs> But no, niggas take the 30 days to sit at home and watch Judge Judy tell another nigga about what he gonna say when he get in there. If you already stipulated the facts before you get into the room, there's no controversy. There's no controversy. That's why niggas fuck up. They wanna get into a controversy. And there is no controversy. Your kid want to play, want to play tea party. You a parent. You can step right over all that shit. But you can't get him to go to bed, so you playing tea party to try and get him to go to bed. I'll knock all this shit over. Get your ass in the bed. Fuck you talking about. But no, the people don't know none of that no more. Because we all, we, we're, 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 we're inundated with democracy. How do you turn a republic into a monarchy? With a democracy. It goes from the people ruling to mobs of the people ruling, and then those mobs create their new leader. And there's your king. You only had to, you only had to use the word king. You don't even have to use the word king. You may as well just say president. Niggas don't know what it is neither way. You may as well just say president. It's gonna have the same force and effect as what a king would. Whatever, right? Anyways, those are the three things to build the presumption. <clears throat> the strong man, the tax identification number, and your cowardice, your silence, your acquiescence. Those three things are on the table. 
nothing else you say really matters. Unless, like, bro, bro, I'm so serious. <laughs> nothing you have to say matters. Because everything you're trying to invoke doesn't exist in the world of Oz. And you brought me all the evidence to say, hey, I agree to and benefit from the world of Oz. So don't tell me you're not part of it. Now you become a criminal. You fucking liar. Thank you, love. This is what you need. Because like I said, you're doing the same thing to yourself spiritually, okay? This is what, this is what goes into when I ask, what is you? Okay, remember, I'm not looking for a right answer. It's, 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 I'm looking for the framework. I'm looking for the consistency, the idea. What are you invoking? Where is, where did you, okay, what is you? The soul. Okay, now that you said that, where does that lead us? That's the, I want to see where we're going. Not if you got the right answer. Where are we going with this? What, what is this proving? Where is, which, how is this evidence? How is this substantiating what you're saying? It's not so you can prove it to me, it's so you can prove it to you. Fuck you mean. Anyway, you've diminished your capacity. We used to be kings, we used to be gods. Well, why did it stop? Because the duh, 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 duh came along, oh, so that must be more powerful. No, you put it down, you let it go, you diminished your capacity. You're agreeing to it. I will not deny you that we are having an experience, but to say it's a human experience is an agreement. So how does Dorothy get out of the, the land of Oz? Dorothy never left Kansas. Dorothy never left Kansas. The reason you even have to deal with the land of Oz is because you're letting it sit there with its standing based on presumption. The same reason, the same difficulty you're having with the physical world, it's your presuppositions, the presumptions you're making, part of it being human. What are you invoking when you say that? Oh God, I won't say the word. No, talk is cheap. What are you invoking? What's the context on that? What else comes along when you say that? Let me ask, what street do you live on? What else comes along when you answer that? What's your name? My name is my given name. My family already had a name. It was here before I even got here. And then when I got here, they gave me another one. So you got your given name and your family name. What the hell is a first, middle, and last name? What the hell is a last name? Ah, for bastards, right? You don't have heritable blood. So you don't have a family name. yesterday and I'm pretty sure he was doing it to to slightly bother me because this is my cousin he'll say almost anything uh, but you gotta you gotta know him to know that that's what he's doing uh, but my cousin he um he was like hey man I'm a flat earther now and and you know I died you know I died a little bit I had to die he told me he was a flat earther um What's real doesn't matter. It's what you can prove. What's real doesn't matter. It's what you can prove. It's what's always what you can prove. This is why I say, what is you? Okay, point to the soul, point to the universe, point to everything. Okay, wonderful, there's, your, there's that. Now, how do you substantiate it? Because that's the more important part.
most people's issue today is their relationship with reason. Your relationship with reason. Your ability to question, what do you know? How do I know this? Where does this come from? Mm -hmm. That's the, that was the whole that was the whole joke thing, well, part of the joke thing, about well, you do, do, uh, does your man think about the Roman Empire? How the fuck could you not? We're in it. <laughs> We're in it. <laughs> Where was the Temple of Juno? On Capitol Hill. <laughs> it was a symbol of Rome. An eagle. What killed Rome? This inundation with corporations. What is the great whore? What is the great whore? Corporate state. Physically, anyway. Spiritually, it's the physical world. Because, why is it a whore? Oh, it's because of the sexual. No. It's because it will, it will make an agreement with anyone and anything. It'll make an agreement with anyone or anything. It'll make an agreement with anyone or anything. That's the great whore. That's the great whore. Anyone telling you the Bible is an anatomy book or a history book is wrong. It's public notice. It's public notice. The Old Testament gives you the law, the New Testament tells you how to live in it. The Old Testament gives you the law, the New Testament tells you how to live in it. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. See, it's easy to say, I'm gonna go dance in the woods. Okay, cool. But then you get to dancing and you realize how much of Caesar's shit you gotta give up. That Federal Reserve note in your pocket, who does that belong to? This is why gold was money, because it was property. Whose property does that slave have in their pocket? It's massive script, script paper. You know what script is? Um, <clears throat> let's say you got, you got a mining company, right? And they basically own the town. Instead of paying the people in actual money, uh, you have the, the company script. And so the people who work for the company uh, can trade amongst themselves and even barter with some of the people in the village that they own or the, or the town that they own. Um, that way, the company never has to pay them in money. They, the people who work for them never actually develop any wealth, but they can be comfortable enough to continue doing the work. Federal Reserve notes are script. They're script. Technically, I think it's military script, okay? <sighs> This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show y'all this too. Cause I never put it on camera. Here, I'm gonna do two things. One. Why well, do that? I could do. No, I'm not gonna do that. No, I'm not gonna do that. Here's what I'll do. I'll do this. Uh, what? I could have sworn I had it here. I don't know where I put it, guys. I feel like a dick. I feel like a dick. Damn it. I think I just made this shit and I don't know where I put it. Uh, those says Federal Reserve notes. Yeah, that's what I'm about to get. That's what I'm about to get. Hold on. Let me pause this because I do have to pee as well. But I'm about to bring something back. Hold on.
Alright. Yo, ain't nothing better than pissing shit in the coming, bro. It's amazing. Alright. Now, I collect very few things. Um, but one of the things I do collect is Federal Reserve notes. And that's not a way of saying I get money. Bear with me here. Let me pull these out for you. Ones. These are these ones too. No, these are denominations, and these are the certificates. All right. There we go. Let's see if you can see that. What is this? No, let me show you the back. What is this? This is a silver certificate. It's from uh, 1935 E-Series, okay? Silver certificate. It's actually one of the star notes. Um, here, I'll show you. Because usually they put these on series that had a, a, a misprint or something like that. Like, for example, here's another Federal Reserve note with one of them. This is one of the newer series. You see that star next to the, um, the green series of numbers? That green series of numbers matches up with a bond number that's on the back of some security cards. And you're like, oh my God, you're just telling them the secrets. No, it's in, it's, it's in your face. Okay, it's in your face. Anyway, that number is associated with one of those social security numbers. Because it used to be, it was associated with silver. This is a, this is a, um, a silver certificate. I have a couple of these. And where you see it is right at the top. Can't see that well, can you? No. Here's what I'll do as I show you the ones I have. I'll pull it up online, because if I pull it up online, you can see it a little better. But I want you to see it. I don't know why I muted myself like that. It was actually okay. Do <laughs> Do 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 do. Uh, now what series are these? Uh, these are 1923s. See, this one's even before the one I have here. Cause remember, shit changes in 1933. Anyways, let me continue. Let me uh. That way I can zoom in. There we go. You see that? That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I've been telling y'all about crypto. I'm talking about money. I'm telling you about getting out of the the whole current financial system. All right, you say what you want. Here's whatever, man. Crypto ain't shit. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Okay, cool. Wonderful. Anyways, uh, I don't think I have one that's older than that. No, 1957, 1953. Look, here's a $5 one. Remember, a dollar is a measurement of silver. A dollar is a measurement of silver. The fact that Federal Reserve notes are called dollars is part of the trickery. It's the misdirection. It's the double bluff. <clears throat> now, I'll pull that out with the, um, the other one here, okay? See, I showed you some of the star notes. I have one dollar bills from 1963 all the way up to the current day. All right, just because I'm not going to pull all of them out, okay? Just so I, because when I say these things that they never change the one dollar bill, this isn't some floofy, floofy thing that I heard from somebody. I literally collect these. I know they haven't changed them. What have they changed? The denominational notes. See, these denominational notes, they're like, um, let me go back to the other screen. You know, you only see notes like this in old movies, right? You only see notes like this in the old movies, in this style. These are what they change. The 5, 10, 20. There's an old 100, right? 
Remember, they don't make them like this no more. But this one, here, let me pull out the one from the 50s. They've been making them like this for years. Why? Because all of these are attached to social security numbers. These are the substance. These are the bottom layer. These are the base. Okay? No, oh, go back in your folder. And this is my opportunity to put this one in the folder because I meant to put the five in the folder too. Here's why you got that old money, boy. You better spend that shit. What's stop. What's stop. Uh, what's this one? Yeah, that's the five. Okay. And here. These are United States notes. Okay, these have the red seal. So silver's got the blue. U.S. notes have the red seal. This is from 1953. And Federal Reserve notes have the green seal. Okay? I said, you, you, gotta know, you gotta know a little bit of the history of the money you use. Uh, did you ever see the Confederate money? This is what I'm saying. There's, there's all kinds of different paper money. All kinds of different paper money, especially in this country. There's, um... Here. Look at that. Different parts of the Confederacy had, di Confederacy had different money. Um, the different states, different colonies had different money, okay? What you have in your hand, just calling it money, is a sliver of the history of what's going on. Because all this shit's about to change. All this shit's about to change. All this, um... Federal Reserve dollar stuff, all right, it's just about to change. But the big reason I wanted to bring this up, and let me go to a Federal Reserve note, okay? Because like I'm saying, these Federal Reserve notes, at least the ones anyway, there's a keystroke on my keyboard that keeps doing that, but it's okay because I, I asked for it, I agreed to it, right? Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here, let's just look at the front of this one. No, open it in a new tab. There we go. Oh, that's great. It's just zoomed in and everything. All right, beautiful. Now, I've said before, guys, this green number, look at the symbolism, okay? Look at the design of this. On one side, on the left side, that number, is below the seal. I gotta put this back where it was. On the right side, different seal, and it's above that seal. What's the seal on the right side? The seal on the right side is the Department of Treasury. Okay? Uh, seal on the left side, that's um, Federal Reserve Bank, one of the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. Okay? Uh, Federal Reserve was created in 1933. That's the whole creature from Jekyll Island. Jekyll Island, I think, is somewhere um, South Georgia. Anyways, um, 1933, all right? You have, the, you have the idea of the Gold Clause Act. Um, this is where it was made, it was outlawed for US citizens to own or hold gold, okay? Um, now, from the Constitution up to that point, gold and silver, where it always been lawful money of the of the the country, okay. Um, but see, this is why this is such a predicament. Without the gold and silver, the people could not. They couldn't own anything anymore, and this is why. Um, how do you pay for it? How do you exchange? How do you prove you've bought it? Okay, what will people use as to exchange, all right? And, and what people are using now is um, it's, it's uh, money of account. No, uh, look it up, look it up. Let me, let me see. Let me see. Because sometimes I get that mixed up.
Mm-hmm. There's money of account and money of exchange. Progress, tax and using system. Money exchange. Mm-hmm. Mm. I have to find out where I found that. Anyways, money of account, money of exchange. Basically, what people are doing with these Federal Reserve notes is like what they used to do with gold, okay? Uh, the gold banker, he was like, okay, look, I'll hold your gold, you give me your. 10 pounds of gold, and here's a certificate for the gold. Remember, original registration, original document, and your certificate. Here's your certificate. You can bring the certificate back, and I'll give you the gold back. That's how it starts, right? But what people were doing was using the certificates as money of exchange, okay? Um, and so they would never actually go back and cash in their tickets, and they would just use the tickets. Uh, eventually, the gold, ba- the gold bankers were like, okay, well, if only 10% of people come back, that's all we'll actually hold. The rest of this we'll loan out and make money with, do what we want with it, right? That's, that's your reserve banking. Um, <clears throat> it'll work until there was a run on the bank and everybody wanted their gold back. And they come with their certificates and they'd be like, oh no, we don't have any gold. And the bank would go bust, all right? Um, Federal Reserve notes aren't exchangeable for silver. Uh, this is part of your new deal. Where they're they're gonna go, they're gonna leave the gold standard, all right. And and what's going to uh, substantiate the wealth of the nation now? The um, full faith and credit of the people, the full faith and credit of the people, the labor of the people. Would checks count as paper money? I guess because they're paper. Checks are um, checks are bills of exchange. Yeah, checks or bills of exchange as a payer, uh, pay and a draw. As a payer, pay and a drawer. Uh, three parties. It's a bill of exchange. That's different from a promissory note, which is a promise to pay, like the note on a uh, a mortgage. That's a promise to pay. Um, but and see, here's the thing: because there's no gold and silver, no actual money or exchange. All you have is money of account which means you just you're just changing entries in your accounting book. Okay? Like remember nobody came in to get the gold. So all that would happen is you just change you could change uh, entries in an account. That's it. And then nothing's actually changing hands, okay? Cuz there is no more money. So what's, what's what's um what's playing the role for money are negotiable instruments. Negotiable instruments. This Federal Reserve note is a negotiable instrument. Uh, I because you can't exchange it for anything, I would say it's a promissory note. But I think there are people who would who would have a who would have a nice argument about that. Yeah. So it's a negotiable instrument, okay? You got a currency course areas? Fuck no, I don't. There are so many more people qualified who are more better qualified to have this conversation. All right. I'm I'm having the conversation so we can circle around a few things. All right. Um. Because once again, my biggest thing about this is the symbolism is in front of you. It's in your pocket. You put it in strippers' butts. <laughs> the bond is right there. Like I said, it's attached. Look look on the back of your social security number, your social security card, and you'll see this. Even if you get a new car, you get a new one of those. You can get up to 10, okay? It's a bond. It's the, it's the evidence of your agreement. And it's property. This note is property. This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. It's property of the Federal Reserve note. It's property of the Federal Reserve, excuse me. It's a note. That's the big thing. It's a note, okay? It's signed by two parties. Two parties. Unless, of course, you have one of those rare instances where um, the same person is holding both, both positions. Um, which usually I don't, I, don't, I don't remember having seen happen. I've seen sometimes where one of the positions is empty and so you only have one signature. But generally you have two signatures because this is a contract, it's an agreement. It's a promissory note. What is a department? Departments of military.
departments of military. Uh, I should put the word define, right? You know what? I don't want to look up the words right now. I want to take this back to the spiritual. Because I'm... I, Let's look, I can go with so many different rabbit holes with this. Don't go there. The spiritual warfare part, okay? Let's first of all, bro, this is just physical stuff you don't understand. And you can easily presume you understand because you know a few words. The symbolism. The symbolism. Let's say that this number represents the life and energy, wealth and labor of the people. Okay, let's say that's what this is. Let's say that's the signature, the third party signature, right? There's your third party right there. There's your joy and everything you're going to get some energy from. <clears throat> you never left Kansas, Dorothy. You never left Kansas. Excuse me, I just had an argument in my head about ancestor money. It was kind of funny. All right. The presumption. So now that you have no money to own anything, everything is owned by virtue of the state. Okay? Um, everything is exchanged by virtue of some type of negotiable instrument. If, if the country has no money, it's bankrupt. Okay, and, and the United States Corporation was created long ago, long before 1913. I think that was in like in the 1800s. We put IOUs and strippers butt cracks. Bruh, hey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, no, I ain't got no currency course. Anyways, the United States Corporation is bankrupt. The United States Corporation was created just that few square miles of D.C., okay? Everything else is a territory. The United States Corporation is bankrupt. <clears throat> you ever heard of the national debt? This is what that, this is what it's talking about. Who owes who the national debt? The United States Corporation owes the people but the people are functioning in a diminished capacity of U.S. citizens under a democracy as opposed to the people in a republic. The United States Corporation owes that debt to the people. The people are acting as U.S. citizens below the below the fucking corporation, as part of the corporation, as an employee. Here was the New Deal. The New Deal was, look, we have these public slaves, right? These U.S. citizens, these Negroes. Come on in. This is your voluntary servitude. And this part of it, this is like after the Great Depression, where we, you know, regular what was what was uh, the white middle class was destroyed and um, given the option to go into voluntary servitude as well. Um, so I mean, you don't want to make this shit cosmic and racial. It's it's nothing like that, but it's voluntary. It's voluntary. The physical world is voluntary. It's voluntary. It has to be. Why does it have to be? Because if it were not voluntary, then it would be the one who's in charge. And if you're the thing that's in charge, it has to be voluntary. It has to be. But you're functioning in a diminished capacity going from the people to being a U.S. citizen, going to be the, the all of all of all to human experience. What street do you live on? What's your name? How much money do you have? Do you have any, do you have any money on you right now? Right. That property in your pocket is proof. Wards of the state. 
Um, ZJ, good to see you in the chat. Dawson, yes, you can say words of the state, but it, it, it gets a little more complicated than that. Um, this is what I meant when I said parents patria, where you're, a, you're considered an incompetent. An incompetent is a minor, all right? An idiot. And the state, as a public servant, has a duty to take care of incompetence, uh, has plenty of benefits and privileges for them. And so you have parents patria, which is the, 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 the court can take silent judicial notice that they're dealing with a minor and treat you as such. Um, you don't have to explain to a child that they're a child. In fact, if you, if you consistently have to do that, it's probably you that's the child, okay? You look stupid. Anyways, parents patria. So you can be considered, a, you, can, you, you can consider it a bastard child, an orphan child. Because it's the presumptions, man. It's the, it's the expectation that you think you know what's going on because of regularly scheduled programming. Cultural, there's a, there's a culture of being slaves. There's a culture of it. Talk about rape culture, so fucking stupid. There's a culture of being slaves. And it, you know, I say all this not to get you to a place where you know what to do. When you know what to go say, that's a whole different conversation. It's the principles at play. It is the principles at play. As a thing is bound, so it is unbound. As a thing is bound, so it is unbound. This is why, this is why I talk about this at all. It's an example of as a thing is bound, so it is unbound. This place is not a prison. The physical world is not a prison. The physical world is not a prison. You are not being defrauded. There's not, there's the thing the state is doing is not fraud. You're not being held against your will. You don't know how to express your will. Go ahead, Neil. Ask for your phone call. What does it matter if you don't know how to use your mouth, if you don't even have one? You do not have a freedom you cannot articulate. And if the only words you have are the words of your own enslavement, I'll be damned. I'll be damned. Every fucking show and TV movie you watch, police, human, police, policy, nothing to do with law. Nothing to do with law. You see that big word police? That's all you think. It's the police. It's the police. It's the police. There's different jurisdictions. There's different jurisdictions. Who do they work for? Where did their authority come from? I didn't say they have none. I asked a question. <clears throat> Where does their authority come from? Who do they work for? What's the chain of command? People say the government. What part of the government? Where's their authority from? What's the chain of command? Because they're vested with power. They are vested with power. Well, where the fuck the power in the vest come from? The people. But never ye mind that because you're, you're acting as a U.S. citizen. Remember, I'm all things, I'm everything, I'm all these gods. But never ye mind that. Because now the physical world is a prison. What am I hearing? Hmm. I don't know. Sorry. I felt like the house was vibrating. Anyways. But every that's the washing machine. That's probably the washing machine. <laughs> Your diminished capacity is your issue. What you're agreeing to is your issue. And you say, like I said, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Arius, I am these gods. Arius, I'm all these gods. Arius, if everybody else just knew they was a god, everything would be peachy clean. And we just, and we just go into utopia. No. No. 
As much as you like to think everyone, everyone always, always thought we were gods, yes, because that there was, there was no alternative. The way people think about gods now is based on the Serapis Council of Nicaea bullshit. All right. The ontological category of matter. All these different little presumptions you're agreeing to that, that, that allow the substantiation of the world of ours, that allow the substantiation of this corporate world. The best analogy I have for how this stuff works is, is not, it's, not, it's like um, a shipwreck. Remember, the United States Corporation is bankrupt. The United States Corporation is bankrupt. What we, what we talk about a bank is a bank controls the flow of current. All right, it flows, the, it directs the flow of currency. Now you have river banks that are on the outside, right? But the hull of a ship does the same thing. All right, so when a ship is taking on water, it needs to be bailed out. All right, it's leaking. It's leaking. It's bankrupt. It's probably going to sink. All right, this is what you're looking at. The United States Corporation is a sunken ship. All right, and here come some agents to plunder whatever they can find. Whatever they can find. But here's the trick about it. All that stuff's at the bottom of the sea, right? So, they don't know how to do it. They get their, they get their, um, their, their, their black robe spellcaster to come along. Come out here. I need you to raise these, the, the, the dead people from the ship so that we can take their wealth and then put them back. So come on, come on, come on. And here he comes in his black robe, you know, Julie Simmons. And here comes some, some dead thing out of the water, raised up, it was summoned, and it appeared. A general appearance, mind you. No, 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 no qualified appearance is what I'll say. No qualified appearance. And it appears. Okay, out of nowhere. Julie Simmons. I'm Julie Simmons. Cool. On. On. All right. And then, then here you go. You should administrate the sunken ship. Okay, well, let's, let's see everything about Julie Simmons between birth and death. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And see, look, we don't have to have that conversation based on the presumption. What's the presumption? That we're dealing with a corporation. And if not that we're dealing with the corporation, we're dealing with the registered agent for that corporation. So you don't have to sit there and go, oh, it wasn't me, I'm not that corporation, I'm not that name. Of course you're not. You're the registered agent for it. You're the registered agent for it. Well, you can't prove that. Here's all the evidence. Here's every other place that you've agreed to this based on that social security number, which was substantiated from the birth certificate. Here's all the evidence I need. Do you have any evidence? Nope. That's why I suggest people, if you, if you really want to get into law, start drafting some documents. Start writing shit. Start creating some evidence. Any authority they have came from you. Where else could they have gotten it from? But here's the, here's the tricky part. Here's the good thing. Where does your authority come from? Where do the people's authority come from to even create a constitution? Where do the people get their unlimited capacity to contract? From their creator. Right? Follows the logic. If you create it, it's yours. If you create it, it's yours. It's a diminished capacity. You've seen the father, you've seen the son. You've seen the father, you've seen the son. You've seen the father, you've seen the son. Where do the people get their unlimited capacity to contract? From their creator. But as a U.S. citizen, you deny your creator. You deny it. Just like Judas and all his homies down there. Look, you deny it. Where do you live? Deny your father and refuse his name. 
middle, first, middle, and last name. Deny your father and refuse my name. This is part of the reason you're bastards. You don't substantiate any lineage. You don't know to, which is part of the reason why you're a slave. U.S. citizens are public slaves. They always have been. It was the whole point of it. Niggas weren't freed. They were taken out of private slavery and put into public slavery. Zizé says, God bless America. Look, America and the United States are different things. That's a big part of this. The United States of America and the United States are different things. The United States, I just said two words. What does the of America do? It, it, create, it, it qualifies. It creates a thing. It creates a, 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 um, a fictional context. Just, say, just because something is fictional does not mean it's wrong. Just because something is illusionary does not mean it's wrong. It creates a fictional thing. Like, let, let's say, okay, here. I have a coffee mug, right? Or do I have the coffee mug of infinite waking coffee? Same mug. What do the of do? qualified it made it a thing okay that's part of what the, the, the of America does right because all of North America Central and South America is America the United States is a corporation it, it, it's a federal corporation and it's not saying that's a, that's a bad thing to be all right it, you know federal government can create a corporation to manage its business affairs it's not a problem at all the problem is your agreement to the thing that's it. this thing is this shit is ingenious it's beautiful. It's not the problem. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. You're the problem and how you're agreeing to it. The physical world is perfect. It's perfect. But why are these, and this shouldn't be, and this shouldn't be says who? A human? Of course. Anything can happen, now. everything that's happening, this could happen. Anything could have happened, and out of everything that could have happened, this is what's happening. It's perfect. There's no other way something else could have happened. Anything else could have happened, and this is what's happening. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's doing exactly what it's made to do. The issue is you. What did you think when I said you? I was referring to you as a concept. Like as a category of thing. But did you think about your personality, your body? That's the problem. What do you have in that category? Remember, talk is cheap. Just saying what you have in that category isn't what puts it in there. Your narrative, your context. Go ahead, tell me you're not branded. Okay, let's look and see what you got in the bag. It's all branded in here. Or oh, is this one, it's written on a napkin. <clears throat> I am God. Hmm. Looks cheap. I mean, I got all these certified notarized documents here. I am Brandon and I need this. I am Brandon and I need that. Brandon does that. Brandon is from here. Oh my God. This might have just been trash. Let me just throw that out. What can you prove? What evidence do you have? And before you get into the place, Aries, you're crazy. I don't have to prove anything to anyone. Yeah, you do. To you. Because look, this is what I mean by that. If the significance of everyone else is gone, then the significance of you is there. Like I said, talk is cheap. Just saying it to yourself ain't going to do it. You know that. You want to stop doing this one thing and just tell yourself, I'm going to stop doing it. The next day, you're still doing it. I know. I know. It's not, it's not to make fun of you. That's the predicament. That, that's where we find ourselves. Talk is cheap. What do you really believe? And how do your acts and omissions, in, uh, how are your acts and omissions informed by what you believe? How are your acts and omissions informed by what you believe? So even becoming a sovereign citizen only asked because I had a buddy keep trying to get me to do the paperwork, but he couldn't tell me the benefits. Here, Society Ejects, I'm going to do you the biggest favor in the world. Sovereign citizen? 
is an oxymoron. The only people that call themselves sovereign citizens are the ones who have no idea what they're talking about. It's like out here in the spiritual stuff where anyone can just say, I'm a, I'm a this, I'm a that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just literally an oxymoron. No one who's worth their salt would ever call themselves a sovereign citizen. So I can tell you right now, old dude, he may smell something, but he barking up the wrong tree. I can tell you right now, he barking up the wrong tree. A sovereign answers to no other uh, but themselves. A citizen inherently does not do that. Okay? It's like uh, I'm a married bachelor. Obviously, you don't understand what one of those words mean. <laughs> okay? So, so yeah, first of all, that's not it. Second of all, it ain't the paperwork that does it. It's you. Because look, cause look, real shit. You can have a stack of paperwork, all properly documented, notarized, organized. Oh, yeah, you can have it all. Triplicate copies, stamped, noted, all of it, right? If I take that shit away from you, and you can't reiterate to me what's on there, what the significance of it is, it don't matter. Look, you can walk in with your stack full of paperwork, right? Now say I'm the judge. What's that paper? Oh, these are my um, documentations showing that I'm a sovereign citizen. Okay, and I'll judge that dude that, um, we don't allow personal, we don't allow, um, uh, Personal personal messages uh, to be issued as uh, evidence for anything. You know how to respond to that? What difference does what you if you don't know how to articulate what difference that paperwork makes, it may as well be a napkin, a piece of trash. If I can say something and you abandon that, it wasn't that to start with. Okay, so. The paperwork, yes, you need some of it. Here, yeah, look, let's, 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 let's fuck the paperwork. Let's fuck the paperwork. These things won't fuck the paperwork. Where's some old shit? Where's some old shit? So I ain't gonna let you fuck my new shit. I let's see old shit. I let's see old shit. Cause bro, that's what I'm saying. If you don't know what you're looking at, you don't see nothing. So I don't even, like, bro, whatever, whatever. Don't be a dick, don't be a dick. But I want to be a dick. I really do want to be a dick. Uh, ah, no, let me go back. I'll do that. I'll do that. Uh, it's broken up in PDFs. Why did I do that? Here we go. Let's see. What do I have in here? Uh, Yeah, let's do this one. What do I have in here? Huh, what? What? It's gonna blur enough that you can't see shit. There we go. No, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. Uh, not that one. Close without saving. I love looking at this stuff. It's so much fun. That's so much fun. No, not that. Um, what was this one? Ah, that's what I wanted. It's up here. Fuck, I hit the wrong thing. I was gonna show you an old lawsuit I wrote. It was it was uh, the first time I ever really drafted an extensive document. It was trash. Oh my god, it was fucking trash. Um, but I understand why it was trash now. Um, what was I saying about the documents? Niggas ain't fucking me with the documents, but here it goes. No, what's it doing? Oh, it's, it's fucking with the shit I should have saved yesterday. Okay, I get it. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> I should save my work properly. <laughs> uh, yeah, document, documentation is, is, it's evidence. And that's it. And if you don't know how the evidence... How, what the point of the evidence is, it doesn't mean anything. It's like, okay, you found the dead girl in the King's Woods, but were you poaching or trespassing when you found it? So you have to know the point of what you're talking about. 
Um, no, I won't show you that one. I won't. And that was the whole point of not doing that. Here, put that down. I don't need that. Oh, God. Look at this fucking mess I've made. Uh, is this one I did? No, this is the template. No, this is the fucking template. Paperwork ain't shit, bro. Uh, I and no one, once again, learning to do this shit yourself ain't fun. It's not fun. It's not something to be proud of. Like you know, you even see white kids who are like, "Man, I wish I grew up in the hood so I could be a little cooler." Fuck you. Doing this shit by yourself, having no one to help you with the threat of jail, is not fun. None of it's fun. Privileged pieces of shit, bro. I had to, I had to draft this shit myself. All the exhibits, every part of it, all the signatures, notifications, law of the case, and I still was wrong. I still was wrong. I still didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I knew more than niggas who didn't know shit, but I still didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I still didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Here, what's that? What's another one? Um, ooh, this is good. This is a draft or something, isn't it? Yeah, that's just a draft or some shit. Uh, if y'all saw the little seal up there, it's called armorial bearings. I mean, families used to have a crest, right? Families used to be established. Not today. That's a pretty picture there. Here's my first, last, and little name. Fuck you guys. Yeah, bro, paperwork ain't shit. I got paperwork for days. I got paperwork for days. Here, let me show you some old, old shit. That's what I'm really looking for. That's what I'm really looking for. What is this? Uh, this may be some of the shit here. Ha! <laughs> this is funny. Oh, God. I ain't seen some of this shit in years, man. Yo, paperwork ain't a thing. And look, you'll see the, um... These are these are made on legal legal size paper. Um, I usually use color to to make different distinguish distinctions. Symbolism, symbolism speak louder. Fuck you mean? Anyways, um, the guy who originally came up with that format, uh, his name was David Clarence. Now when I when I tell you the person's name and I show you the fact that I use the format, it is not to say this person is infallible. You need to go listen to them and have their dick in your mouth. I think the guy's a paraplegic actually. So, I mean, he may be happy about that for you, but I'm not suggesting you do that. Um, because I pull, I had, once again, I had to do the shit by myself. So I had to pull different things from different places and try to find how this works, what works here, what works there. Um, so it was a means to it, it was a tool. But paperwork is this, it's just paper. It may as well be a fucking piece of toilet paper if you don't know what it means and why it means that. Okay, you could have you could have the Constitution for the alien race of Zubachum. Okay, cool. What's the relevance? How does this connect here? What's the reasoning? You got to make sure you are in the right point. Hey, we found a dead girl in the King's Woods. Were you poaching or were you trespassing? You got to know the point. So the paperwork, the paperwork is fun. Society ejects. Um, well, it becomes fun once you're good at it, but it's just paper. You got to know it in and out. The paper is just the e it's evidence, okay? It's, it's evidence. Uh, that boy Dirty in the house, good to see you, man. I think with sovereign citizens, you can avoid paying taxes, but I don't really know the other benefits myself. Could be wrong. Yeah, very wrong, no. Um, you could evade certain taxes. Avoiding and evading taxes are different. Um... No, no, see, you can avoid you can avoid certain taxes, but you can't evade taxes. Excuse me. And see, like like taxes is some serious shit. Taxes is some serious shit. You know what? They don't fuck up tax records. <laughs> they don't fuck up tax records. <laughs> oh shit. Um. Yeah. 
the, the foreigner pays the tax so the king's children can go free. The foreigner pays the tax so the children of the king can go free. U.S. citizens are foreigners on the American continent. U.S. citizens are foreigners on the American continent. It's part of why you got the Buck Act and the Trading with the Enemies Act. Okay? U.S. citizens are enemies of the state. U.S. citizens are enemies of the state. This is why you can have a quiet war with silent weapons against them. A quiet war with silent weapons. Because they're enemies of the state. Why wouldn't that be the case? You've abandoned the republic. You've abandoned the republic and are trying to substantiate a democracy on its soil. You've abandoned the republic in, for, for, in, in lieu of, of, of districts. Zip coded out districts. Really, you really get into it, go back to the money. 12 districts, all right, Federal Reserve districts. You've given up the republic. You're an enemy of the state. You're literally fighting against it at this point. Just take silent judicial notice and they don't have to even mention it to you. Because you don't know the game that's being played at all. Like a kid holding a fucking controller in their hand. Anyways, no. Uh, first of all, like I said, there's no such thing as a sovereign citizen. Second of all, um, you may be able to avoid taxes, but you cannot evade a tax that you have a liability for. Um, so I, would not, I wouldn't even suggest anyone try to use any of this to get around taxes. Pay every single tax that you're supposed to pay. Not even gonna try it, because that's where shit gets different. All right, because the layers of agreement. Don't don't get into the law stuff to try and get away from something. Okay, as the thing is bound, so what is unbound? You're not going anywhere, <laughs> especially if you're trying to get away. Uh, hold up, you wrote that yourself for a lawsuit? Yeah, by myself. <clears throat> Shit, tell me about it. I have so many IRS letters. Oh man. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Um, if you're if you're interested in dealing with IRS stuff or any type of financial stuff, I would say look into the secure party process. Um, a guy named Yusuf L. He he's really good at talking about it. But the reason I would suggest secure party process is because it extends itself from the whole idea of um, there there no there no longer being any money in circulation. Um, uh, it's based it's based on securitizing yourself. No, 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 don't, that's, that's too loose of language, excuse me. Um, it's a security agreement between the man and the, and the, uh, the ends legis, the corporation, um, and it's securitized by a bond, and you can use that bond to set off debts, uh, more especially things like IRS debts, I would say. Um, but, because as you see, Without money, you can't pay for anything. You can't pay for anything. See, some people look at this, this law stuff and say, oh, you can use this to pay for your car and your house. And you da -da 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 -da. No, you don't pay for anything. There's no way to pay. In fact, that in, invoking that could get you in trouble. Because what, what are you talking about? Now you're lying. Now you're committing a crime. Because there's no money, so how are you paying for something? You must be lying. This must be some kind of fraud. Oh. Um, yeah, but I'd say look into that for real. Uh, or look into um, accepted for value. Um, I think it's a little bit more esoteric. Um, who was the guy who did... Look up, a, look up a video called What is Accepted for Value? Um, God, what is the nigga's name? I want to say Douglas Riddle. Um, but I honestly don't remember off the top of my head to please. It can be completely honest. Hold on, I might have it in my fucking world of talks. Uh... Y'all niggas don't understand, bro. I got documents for days. I got audios for days. Fuck you mean. Was it Douglas Riddle? Yeah, let me look at the word value in this folder. Because I might have this here. Mm, no. Fuck. Uh, who told me about that? Mm. Gordon Hall is great on contract. If you want to understand how contract works, look up Gordon Hall. It's like a, a, a 17 part um, conversation. Like, motherfuckers are talking about this shit online. Like, that's the shit. Like, your ignorance is a choice. You know about the new um, Sexy Red album and Ginger Spice, right? But, but, but you don't know about 
the, the, the Constitution, what it means to be sovereign, what it means that the people are sovereign, what a citizen is. Now, I don't know none of that, but I know the new Ginger Spice uh, butt album. Like, the fuck? I know that Trump is da -da 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 -da. Biden said da -da 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 -da. but I don't know how money works. But that's by design, and I get it. But yeah, bro, and see the thing about the thing about the like letters, um, at this point you'd be in dishonor because of your silent acquiescence. And see, all this stuff can be handled, but you actually have to um you actually have to contend with it. You actually have to be responsible for it. You actually have to have an understanding of what's going on. You got to read it and study it. You got to know it. Know it in a way that you can articulate it. You don't have a freedom you can't articulate. Can you discharge the debt because you wouldn't be the representative of your straw man? No. Um, to discharge a debt is to set it off into the future. Not set it off into the future, but to push it into the future, excuse me. To set it off is going to be, uh, it's, it's an extinguishing of the debt. Because let's, uh, let's say I owe you $5 and you owe me 10, then I lose to a basketball game and I owe you five more dollars. So we each owe each other five, $10, so we just set it off and owe each other nothing. All right, the, the, the debt is extinguished because we set off the debts with each other, okay? Um, discharging debt, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say people have the, the authority to discharge debt. I would say if you have if you have the substance behind it, you can set off debt. Um, and see, that's the thing: the the national debt is owed to the people. And so, if you have if you have a you have if you have the substantiation of your standing as the people, you can use the debt that you're owed to set off any debt the U.S. citizen owes. Because you, okay, on the U.S. side, U.S. citizen and people side, right? On the U.S. citizen side, you owe a debt. On the people side, a debt is owed to you. And so once you have the evidence for this, you can set off any debt that they would, that, that, that would come out of, any, any debt, public or private, right? Okay, um, you set off the debt. Now, discharging a debt is, is pushing it into the future, okay? That's like, um, that's like, uh, fucking Man Bear Pig. <laughs> you know, Man Bear Pig, 40 years ago, Man Bear Pig comes, and he's like, okay, I'm about to destroy the world. And they're like, no, don't destroy the world. Don't destroy the world. You know, we want to have good things in life. Okay, look, I'll come back in 50 years and destroy the world if you agree to this right here. Okay, cool, I'm not going to destroy the world. 50 years comes back. Oh, I'm here to destroy the world again. No, don't do that. Here, push it into the future. That's discharging the debt. Because what it does is it pushes it into the future. All right, pushes it out. Discharge. Pushes it out, okay? What you want to be doing is setting off debt if you're going to mess with that at all. Um, and it has nothing to do with the fact that you're the representative of the straw man. Representative. I mean, what type of representative? In what capacity? What type of standing do you have in the matter? Um, and see, this is why I suggest the secure party, the secure, the secure party creditor. Excuse me, the secure party creditor process is because that's that's the that's the that's the standing you have as a representative. It's that you're a secured party. You have a secured interest in that particular uh, entity. All right, you have a security agreement. Okay, see so once again, the world of finance. It's a lot bigger than niggas know. Get the bag, get the money. Got me a check. Got a check. Okay, cool. I mean, it's, it's hidden. But it's, hot. it's not talking about none of this shit. All right? And that's the thing. Go, you get your human experience and your regularly scheduled programming. It's always been what is you? What are you agreeing to? <sighs> It's always been that. It's, it can't be anything else. It can't. Whatever. I'm the dick, right? That's the more stuff, and they be putting people in prison over it. Especially if you walk in today and you don't defeat the presumption. Because this is the thing. With the New Deal, with, 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 with getting rid of the gold standard and making everybody... Um, a, a ward of the state, if you will, or, or dependent upon the state, okay, because they can't pay their debts. 
Okay, if you can't pay your debts, you can't own anything. And so, by virtue of that, uh, there's the there's a standing presumption now that everyone is a U.S. citizen. Before, between, before 1913, you would have had to, no, actually before 1933. They put it on the books in 1913, and it went unaddressed for 20 years. Before 33, um, the presumption is, of course, this is an Article Three court. Of course, this is a judicial court. What other kind of fucking court would it be? But after 33, the presumption is this is an Article One court. Everyone's a U.S. citizen. This is legislative. And so the Constitution has nothing to do with it. U.S. citizens aren't a party to that. You were created by it, but you, you, you don't... You don't uh, if there are any benefits you were to get from that, you don't have any control over that. It's like in a trust. The beneficiary doesn't have any control in a trust. The trustee has the control. That's part of being in a trust. And so if you're a beneficiary of the United States corporation, you don't control none of that. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. But that's that's... A capacity as a U.S. citizen. Now, when, when people don't defeat the presumption, this is why I'm, I'm talking about this about the more stuff. If you don't defeat the presumption, they can just create a, a place in Oz called more this. But let's say you walk in and you say, I'm a more, because it's a hearing. Fuck, fuck what you see. It's a hearing. I'm a more. M-O-R-E. M-O-O-O-R. M-O-O-R, right? That's what you're saying. What the judge says is M-O-O-R-E. How do you know to how do you know to object to that? How do you know? You don't know the game they're playing. They have they have jails for mores. For people who make this argument. And I'm not saying the argument is wrong. Fuck what's right or wrong. What can you prove? Fuck what's right or wrong. What can you prove? Yeah, so just saying. You're more. Talk is cheap. It's not going to cut it. You need your evidence. You, and it has to be able to defeat the presumption that you can make based on all the other evidence you got. Based on all the other evidence you got. So you have to reestablish yourself in the Republic. And the, the good thing about that is you never left Kansas. The Republic is a house that's been abandoned. It's an empty house. The house ain't gone because you had to build this shit on top of it for this shit to even exist. So the house is still there. It's just abandoned. Niggas would rather be in a democracy as a U.S. citizen. This is good because I became a business owner with no knowledge of running a business, took so many L's, and learned so many lessons. Yeah, bro. That's the good thing about this. This place is made for businesses. And what you want to eventually be able to do is just run, just live through business. Own nothing, control everything. Oh, is that your car? No, this business owns it. Is that your house? No, this business owns it. Those are the clothes on your back, those are yours, right? No, nope, business owns it. So what do you own? Nothing. Oh, so if you get sued or, or I'm coming to trying to get something from you, you don't own anything. Hey, I'm coming to tax you. What do you own? Nothing. Nothing to tax. With the human shit, with the regularly scheduled programming, people have been conditioned to operate their life in a public manner. Remember now, you're public slaves, okay? They've been, they've been conditioned to operate their life in a public manner. You get married. Hey, what, what, don't I need to go to the state? Okay, you, you, you start a business. Don't I need to go to the state? You want to use your automobile. You don't call it an automobile. You call it a carriage or a truck. Car, carriage. You call it a carriage or a truck. Don't I need to go to the state? I'm going to have a, I'm gonna have a garage sale in the front yard. Don't I need to go to the state? Everything. 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 You're taught to make the state a third party. As a matter of fact, not only are you taught to make the state a third party, you have no idea how not to. Your capacity is so deeply diminished, you can't see that you're taller. You can't see that it's your baby. <laughs> it's only a vicious game if you're losing. 
It's only a vicious game that you're losing. This is nature. Let he who would be deceived be deceived. That's food. How dare you? I'm going to take the butterfly out of the spider's web. I feel sorry for the butterfly. Why don't you feel sorry for the spider? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Look, you don't have a freedom you can't articulate. Motherfuckers, I know my rights. I know my rights. Rights and duties are correlative. So if you know your rights, there has to be some type of duty attributed to it. Otherwise, what the fuck are you talking about? You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Nobody, nobody holds anyone to standards. Everybody's right, right? See, look, I told y'all, I come from this side of law shit. Ain't no everybody's right. Ain't no everybody's right. And just like there's physical law and there's spiritual law, there's agreement, there's contract. Now, look, there's one thing I, I, was, I, was, I was watching, um, what a man name? Uh, Traff. Um, he was talking about, um, upper part of the tree of life. He was talking about, you know, um, the expansion, excuse me, the expansion part. Like, just think about it like this. Okay, you go from nothing to something, to many things. And now the many things have form. Like, there are different agreements along the way to go from nothing to the manifestation of all things. There are different agreements along the way in being to come to this conclusion. Okay? That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't like the idea of, 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 of ignoring or rejecting the physical world. You've already, you've already cast the dice. The game has already begun. You have to play it through. You have to play it through. You have to play it through. Like, um, like uh, I remember Trav warned, and I think this is a good warning. He warned people with a, in terms of the left-hand path, it's like, look, if you don't know how to dance, you're going to end up deifying all your bullshit. And he's completely right. He is completely right. You will deify all your bullshit, which is what a lot of you motherfuckers have done. The nihilistic narcissism. You will deify your bullshit and think that you have done it. You will authenticate your birth certificate. Express the trust in court. I know. I know. I've been doing this for a while. I'm just going to send it all back to him. If I send it back, then that's done and it's over. No. Nope. You've already cast the dice. You've already begun this game. Look, if I'm a thing that can't exist unless you entertain me, I'm looking for every place you've entertained me. I'm looking for every single agreement, and I'm going to make it as significant as I can because without you, I don't exist. These are your children. All of these public servants are your children. They put the change lightly upon themselves that they might enslave their brother. What do I mean by that? Everyone, everyone, right? Unlimited capacity, all the people. No, no establishments or nothing. Just all the people standing next to each other. Okay, a few of them say, look, uh, to serve everybody here in our endeavors, I'm going to become a servant to all of us, a public servant. Here, put the chains on me. I'm your servant. Okay, right? That's putting the chains lightly upon yourself. You haven't enslaved yourself, but you've agreed to be of service. That's putting the chains lightly upon yourself. What you have currently are those who have put the chains lightly upon themselves and enslaved their brothers. Okay? Um... For example, no, I don't want to use that example. I don't want to use that example because then I have to explain that too. No. The people, Constitution, Congress, U.S. citizens, the people, Congress, U.S. citizens. Uh, you can just get Congress and government if you like to, for now, okay? Just to keep the analogy so we see war flowing, okay? Who creates who? Once again, it's the same shit spiritually with, with, with the self at large and the self in context. 
Who creates who? What creates what? Where is the authority? Where is the chain of command? Who's vested with what? The people, the state, U.S. citizens, okay? First, it's all the people. Then, to form the state, a few put the chains lightly upon themselves. But through all their scheming and plotting, have now created this U.S. citizen that enslaves the originals. And so now, the one who had the chains lightly placed upon themselves seems like the highest of the high. Yes, Your Honor! <gasps> All right, <sighs> sir. Head ass. I know. I get it. Right. The one with the chains lightly upon him is now the highest in the room because everyone is a slave. Like, you know, it, it's easy to look at this stuff and say, "Oh, the judge is doing this to me. The judge is doing that to me. This ain't right. This ain't right." What if that motherfucker is your best friend? I know you don't like him. I know you don't say the thing you want to hear. What if that motherfucker is your best friend and you don't understand what you is? Oh, fuck this spider. <laughs> nah, why the fuck you in the well? Shit, maybe you the nigga need get eat. What the fuck you talking about? <laughs> Jumanji head ass, I got to play my turn. You got you to gotta play the whole thing, bro. Look, that's what I'm saying. You, you can't. You can't consider yourself an injured party of something you're benefiting from. You know, equ equity doesn't, um, equity doesn't something a volunteer. I can't remember the, the middle word there. And I don't want to just throw in a word in there because words mean things. You know, words mean things. All this shit is fucking make-believe. But I mean, just because it's make-believe don't mean it's not real. It's fictitious, it's fictional, but it doesn't mean it's not real, all right? It's fictional. Um, there is a reality to it. And these, these motherfuckers cannot exist without that reality. This is why they will emphasize it everywhere. This is what's called minimum contacts. Minimum contacts, even the slightest invocation of US jurisdiction invokes the whole thing. Okay, Dorothy never left Kansas, but just the slightest invocation of the world Oz invokes the rest of it. Okay, it's called minimum contacts. Where do you live? On a street. <laughs> okay, what's your name? First, middle, and last. Fucking, where are you? In the state of Georgia. You were in, the state of Georgia was the dirt, and you were in the state of Georgia, you'd be under the ground. And you got the maritime stuff with the high water, war, high water mark. Like, this is what I was talking about with the, with the old sunken ship. <sighs> the United States Corporation is bankrupt. It has no money. And so you have to do the accounting on everything that's gone on so that you can get the books correct. I've been doing accounting for the last, what, 70, 90 years? <laughs> Just going out there into the water. Julie Simmons! Seeing what floats up. Doing the accounting for the bank. Send it on its way. Or put it in a cell and use it to, to fund the rest of the shit you're doing. Bruh. This is one of the things where I'd like to say it could all be so simple, but I doubt it. I doubt it. What you've done to yourself legally is the same thing you've done to yourself spiritually. You've diminished your capacity of your own volition. You need to know the nature of your predicament and how you're continuing to agree to it. You need to know the nature of your predicament and how you're continuing to agree to it, okay? That's going to tell you, what do I do? You need to know the nature of your predicament and how you're continuing to agree to it. Straw man, tin man, cowardly lion. Straw man, tin man, cowardly lion. That is how you're agreeing to it. That is how you're continuing to agree to it. All right, this is like with the spiritual stuff. 
I tell you, you need the non-physical conception of self. Why? Because it's, not, it's equally as non-physical as the personality, but it's not based in the physical world. The idea of the personality, the entire narrative is based in the physical world. The idea of the thing you identify as is based on the straw man and the tin man. All of it's based in the straw man and the tin man. You don't even know how to identify yourself outside of the straw man and the tin man. And then when I ask you, okay, what did you? Here you come with some esoteric gibberish that doesn't even mean anything. It's not based on a framework. There's no evidence. You have no evidence to substantiate that you are a god other than some scribbles on a napkin. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. That's why the judge can sit there and yak, 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 and none of it will even mean stuff. Because look, who, who was even sworn in? You think this you think this interaction is the whole thing. Appellate courts. You're just there to create a record. I didn't know that for years. I was in the play. Wanted to go in and argue. Thought that was the way. Oh, yeah, I get in here. I'm going to say this. I'm going to da 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 Wait till they see my paper. I'm going to da 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 It's all on paper. It's all on paper. Without the paper, that without the paper giving the vesting the authority, they wouldn't have it. It's paper pushing. It's like Yu-Gi-Oh, where it's really the card, but you're looking at the blue eyes white dragon. And not only that, you diminish your capacity from someone who plays the game to one of the monster cards. You diminish your capacity from someone who plays the game to one of the monster cards. What is you? And it's not about having the right answer. It's not about having the right answer. It's about having that answer being part of a narrative, a framework, evidence, proof. It's easy to just say I'm a god. It's easy to just say I'm all these gods. Where's your proof? What does it mean? You never left Kansas. But that's just talk if you don't understand what I mean. You never left Kansas. You have a mountain of all this shit that you've been agreeing to that's not even close to what you say you're looking for. You never left Kansas. There's nothing to upgrade, nothing to unlock, no place to go. You never left Kansas. That's not a picture up. That's not a picture up. I don't have a picture up anymore. Whatever. Fuck it. You never left Kansas. The, the Nesket Cube and Square. In Cuban, uh, Cuban sphere, excuse me. The nested Cuban sphere, it's all in the same place. It's one thing. There's nowhere to go. There's nothing to upgrade. There's nothing coming back. To come back would, assume, would presume that it left. To be disconnected from nature is to presume that you could ever be, that you could ever be disconnected. All right? You, to reconnect to nature is to presume that you could ever be disconnected. To go back outside is to presume that there's ever really an inside. What are you agreeing to? What are you invoking with the words that you use, the words that you say? How do you know where they come from? What determines whether or not you know, whether or not you understand? It cannot be feelings, or else all you're really doing is just justifying feelings. The devil's in the details. You have to know what you're talking about. The reason I can't tell you what to do is because there are infinitely many things you could do. Like, the state is so 
deeply outnumbered and over and underpowered compared to the people, but the people are completely asleep. And people are deep sleep. So deep in the sleep, they don't even comprehend they're sleeping. They think the dream they're in is reality. Dorothy. And the dream you're in is sure as hell based on reality, but it ain't the reality. And if you knew that, you wouldn't have the problems with it that you have. Never left Kansas. You know, the soul is in the body. How the fuck does that work? Where? Where in the body? Where? It's in your pioneer gland. Somebody open that shit up and find it for me. Nobody's done it. Nobody can because it's not the case. The same thing you've done to yourself spiritually is what you've done to yourself legally. You have diminished your own capacity of your own volition. There is nothing out there coming back. There is nothing you have to do. There is no upgrade. There's no special place you need to go. There's no special pose. What? is you. It's always the issue. Anytime you're about to ask me a question, anytime you're about to ask me a question, just go ahead and throw that in there. Throw that in there real quick. Imagine me saying that to you right away and consider it. Then ask me. Please, we'll, have, we'll go so much further. We'll, st we'll, we'll be able to skip most of the step because I'm going to say, it. what is you? What's your premises of thinking? What's the context? What's the framework? What are the details? You want to be able to let go of this personality shit, not be, not be so inundated in your own emotions. Okay, well, what is you? What are you agreeing to? What are the details around that? See, the part of the reason you get, like I said this before, the part of the reason you're so deeply ingrained in your personality is because you have the narrative. There's a story that that is nested in. And so in order to deal with the non-physical context, the non-physical conception of self, excuse me, it needs to be nested in a narrative. It's, well, the devil's in the details. There's tricks to how to do this. Like, I be talking to motherfuckers, and they'll do these little thing where they, they listen to me, and they won't ask me any of it, but they'll do little things like, hey, man, I'm doing what you're talking about. And I'm like, how do you know that if you've never talked to me? How do you know you're doing what I'm talking about if you've never talked to me about it? You don't. You feel like you do. It's a big world. It's a big existence. It's a lot. There's so many details. There's so many details. Yeah, your boy Dirty says, it's got to be a horrible agreement to make when su surgeries were performed live, saying the soul was in the pineal, and now they're performing a lobotomy before cracking open the pineal to see the soul. Bruh, I'm thinking like two centuries and beyond. Bruh. Yeah, before Novocaine and anesthesia. <laughs> it's just tested on the nigger. They got an extra bone in their hip and they don't feel pain the same. <laughs> oh, man. Um, wait. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not. Because <sighs> if you say it, it's in the body, you've invoked the standing for the physical world and it's, it's uh, the emergent properties in it. The things in the physical world are emergent symmetries. Okay, they're emergent. And this is, remember, I said my cousin talked to me, he's like, I'm a flat earther. And look, I'm not going to allow him to live this way. So I'm not certainly going to say everything in the world. But look, it's, 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 it's like that. It's, um, I forgot what I was going to say. I completely forgot what I was going to say. Ah, this is it. Flat Earth, right? And so I'm telling him, like, look, bro, if you're going to reject things like gravity, right? Things like um, 
planetary planetary movements and how 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 the 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 planets are set up and what they're made of how that works right if you're going to deny that you're denying cells in that dynamic you're denying the 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 the, the, the different uh, biology all right you're denying atoms and subatomic particles because all of the that entire framework is cohesive it's coherent it connects there's a continuity just saying buoyancy doesn't do it. Because look, bro, and it's obvious when I asked him, it's like, look, if you're telling me there's a floating up and down, what's at the bottom? What's at the top? Because you can't tell me there's a top or a bottom. How can you tell me you're going up or down? Most people misunderstand the world around them and they attribute it to having been lied to. No, maybe you're gullible. Not that you were lied to. Who cares if you were lied to? They're free to lie to you. It's your relationship with reasoning. How you come to the conclusions you come to. That's the, that's the shit that you want to be focused on. I always thought about that when people say they was fighting for their life. Who the hell were they fighting with? Who? Who was fighting for their life? It was flat earth shit? I hope not. Nah, but I, yeah, look. It's your relationship to reasoning. How you come to the conclusions you come to. That's what fucks you up. That's what fucks you up. It's what's fucked me up. But I had to do shit by myself. But, you know, this is what a lot of motherfuckers going to do. Fuck you, Arius. I hear what you're saying. But I'm going to do this and I'm doing this and I'm cool. Hey, man. Hey, man, look. Look, just know I'm gonna laugh when you come back around talking about da 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 Yeah, no, bro, I seen it. I knew. It's all right. It's not because I know everything. It's because I know the thing that you're trying to do. Like, like this man dirty. This man dirty be up under the hood of the car, right? He like, hey, look, Aries, man, your alternate is a piece of shit. I, I regularly mention the alternate because I actually know what that is. <laughs> your alternate is a piece of shit and it's eating your starter. And I'm like, you know what? You know what, Dirty? I hear you, bro. I'm the Duke of Darkness, man. I'm about to go just get some premium gas, and that'll fix it. I'll be all right. No. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I most certainly don't know everything. But I know, I know about what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I'd be quiet. And I'm open. I'm always open to critique. Like I say, this is why I don't teach this show. Because there are people who, see, who speak this shit better than I do, who know more about this. I don't teach about cars. There are niggas who do that better than me. Don't nobody do this better than me. Don't nobody do this better than me. <laughs> the alternate of eating the starter. <laughs> you know, scamming at that point. <laughs> well, look, and see, if I don't know shit, I don't know you're not scamming. That nigga, Billy Carson, boy, got millions of followers. He's a legit scammer. York, not New York. The, both of these niggas had a history of scamming. But that's the new thing. That's the new talent is to have no talent and to make it look like you do. You get people to buy in. Hey, man. Hey, man, look, that's what you do. Because look, you listen to Billy Carson, and that Anunnaki coming for you, bud. Anunnaki out there with the melanin stock. Get the fuck out of here. That's just bullshit. But if you don't know, and they're going to look at that and say, oh, shit, that's what's happening. My alternator is eating the starter. Shit. And really, I knew it the whole time because I heard this one sound when I was driving, and that explains this and that. This is what niggas do. You can say some stupid shit, and here they go. That, you know what? That makes sense because I was doing that, and I knew this the whole time. Like, it's crazy. Why he's scamming you? This is real life, though. And motherfuckers be wondering why I triggered. And motherfuckers wonder why I triggered. Imagine dirty. If a Nick, you, a Nick came in your shit, came in your shop, and he's insisting on telling you about the alternator eating the starter. Hey, Arius, can I summon a demon with just my Kundalini? 
So your alternator is eating the starter. Hmm. It's always what is you. 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 Right, middle or left hand path, I don't care. It's always what is you. It's always your premises of thinking. You could be anything. You have an unlimited capacity to contract. You have an unlimited capacity to contract. Human experience. <laughs> Ugh, that alternator eating that fucking battery though, right? Bro, see, it's, I'm sure a necromancer could fix a car better than me. I hope not, dirty. See, bro, I'm sitting here giving you the good shit, talking this good shit. You talking about that? What's up? <laughs> Look, necromancy is an advanced uh, ancestor work. <laughs> We're gonna get spooky, kids. <laughs> now I think about it, I'm an automotive necromancer. Basically, I mean, look, who's going to tell you you're not? Who's going to tell you you're not, bro? Just get the special lube out so the nigga want to come over and circle zerk you. He's already set up, you know. <laughs> we work with the dead. <laughs> dead cars. Look, he bring dead cars back to life. Hey, man. <laughs> oh, shit. <sighs> it's, what, it's what can you prove. Fuck what's right or wrong. It's what can you prove, y'all. <sighs> Remember, once again, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm explaining some of the map and the territory. I'm not telling you what to do. The being will tell you what to do. In the world, but not of it. I give you the non-physical conception of self. The issue is not what are you supposed to do. It's what is you. It always is. It always is. How could it not be if you're in charge? But see, it's one thing to say you're in charge. It's another to know how to act, to know how to be. We was kings. Well, nigga, do you know how to run a state? Uh-oh. Yeah. We was kings. We was gods. But you mad about the lives you live in. Look at the lives the gods lived. Their families were fucked. And you sitting here with your mama drum. I'm a god. Whatever. 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 Ugh. Look, guys. Yeah. This is this is the final episode of the shitstorm. This is this is dying right here today. Um Yeah, I got a whole different angle I'm working on. We're going to the playground. I want to get motherfuckers started on this work. That's what I found more than anything, is people ain't even started. Just getting a bunch of information don't start you. Just getting a bunch of information don't start you. Just listening to a bunch of people say things doesn't get you started. Just listening to a bunch of people say things don't get you started. Hey, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the oldest paperwork. I'm gonna show you my oldest paperwork. Uh Uh, uh, where's my oldest paperwork? Uh, is that the oldest thing I have saved? Are you serious? Can't be. But it probably is. Damn. This is the oldest thing I got? Nah, that's 2014. Nah, man. See, all I got, even my old shit, bro. I did not even... I didn't, I didn't save any of that when I, sh when I shipped it my format. See, bro, I was using some like, obscure, esoteric shit. Oh, maybe this is what this is. <laughs> God, what a piece of shit. This is what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'm not gonna... Uh... Yeah, yeah, bro, my, my old shit... This, this is a basic... It's, it's, it's basic. It's so basic. You know, you look and you see the long form paperwork with the blue text. And you're like, damn, look at this. It's got the seal on there. 
Like, bro, you ain't even seen nothing. I'm telling you. That's the old shit. You have to start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. What is this? Oh, no. Oh, that's what that is. Sorry. This is what I'm looking for. No, that's not what I'm looking for. What were these? Ah. Okay. Yeah, those are title receipts. That's what it says. Where is the thing I look in for, you know? No. Oh, it's probably in here. Right? Like, fuck me, right? Bro, I used to have this old shit with the seals, right? With the seals, with the apostilles. You don't even know what a fucking apostille is. I'm telling you, bro. Shit, you, shit is different. Shit hits different when you're hitting the shit like that. Shit hits different when you're hitting the shit like that. You don't even know what you're looking at, but it's okay. That's what I'm saying. I went, I went from that old basic shit to the hot new freshness. But the thing is, the only way you can do that. It's to fucking um It's to fucking start. It's to fucking start. It's the it's the fucking start, guys. You have to start. And and just just making yourself available to different information ain't gonna do it. Ain't gonna cut it. Uh to say, get the scene ready, y'all. I'm tapping into the motorcycle. <laughs> what? Final episode freestyle, yeah, boy. It's, it's just a freestyle on this shit, bro. It's, it's, oh no, not actual rap. Nah, man, I ain't got no bars for y'all today. Look, this is what I'm gonna do. All you niggas that's been talking about you gonna release an album. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna casually release one and shit on everybody who's been, who's been waiting for their album to drop. Oh god, I'm not even a rapper. All right, all right, y'all. This has got to be it right here. This has got to be it. <sighs> This has been a good run. I've had a lot of fun doing this. Um, I don't appreciate all. I appreciate all y'all coming out who watch, who look, who take it, who take the time to view. Especially motherfuckers who repost the shit or who spread it. Double, triple thanks to y'all, most certainly. Um, and to Donnie, no shade to Donnie. Guys, the, cli the, the sky is finally clearing up. Um, new season. So I don't know what kind of weather you're going to get in the future. But the shitstorm is finally clearing up, guys. Thank you for letting me rain on your parade. Um, keep a lookout for what I'm going to do in the future. Because I guarantee you, don't nobody else do this. Don't nobody else do this. Don't nobody has come close to doing what I do. So, give you some time to miss me. <laughs> go listen to your, go listen to somebody else tell you about your Kundalini meat bag, bro. <laughs> 52 episodes ready for season two to good darkness. <laughs> uh, see, this is it. This is it right here. Right here. It's going to be the last episode, y'all. Um, once again, I thank you for coming out, sharing your time with me, taking a look. This has been fun. It's been one of the most fun things I've ever done. Um, keep a lookout. I'm going to get a little time to miss me, but don't worry, I'm going to be back. Y'all have an amazing day. Enjoy that clear sky. <laughs> you don't realize how much it takes to edit videos. Fuck, no, they don't know. No, no, no niggas don't know how, how, how much this shit takes. Uh, it's all right. Go ahead and try to do what I do. They can't. Holla at your boy, man. Y'all enjoy that clear sky. <laughs>